Hi. <laughs> so, before I start this off, like, at all, um, huge disclaimer, I'm not in the best mental state right now, so if I seem kind of out of it, that's why, but Ace Attorney is, like, literally one of my, um, special interests, so I feel like it should work here hi <laughs> so yeah which is why I'm dropping playing on the other <laughs> the other channel thank you so much I really it makes me really happy to see that you're back <laughs> all right let's start Trials and tribulations. <sighs> ah, how did I get into this mess? Why? Why did I do that? Girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. Y you're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. <laughs> Stop it. D don't talk about her like that. It wasn't me! I- I, I did- I didn't! I didn't do it! I turned up the game audio a bit, so let me know if it's like too loud. And whatnot, five years earlier. It's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Ahem. Oh, Mr. Grossberg. Good morning. Oh, Mia, please calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I am relaxed, Mr. Grossberg. Look at me, I'm relaxed. Mm -hmm. Let go of my lapels. You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. Uh, I'm so sorry. It's just that I'm so nervous today. Well, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, my dear. I'm Marvin Grossberg. I'm at your service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprised me. What with your earnest request last night. Let me handle this case, you suddenly said, and quite forcefully, too. I just found out yesterday about the case. I mean... What? And you've already learned all the relevant facts? Look well, about that. You see, I mean, of course I have, I think. Oh dear. In any case, don't let our clients see you so- see you're so nervous. Oh, okay, that does make sense. You see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there? That's our client. <coughs> Good morning there, everybody. Morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I, uh, I just want to say, I'll give it all I got. Yep, it'll be fine. No problem. <coughs> <coughs> oh, what's wrong? Do you have a cold or something, Mr. Rye? Actually, it's right. Like the Flying Brothers. People screw it up all the time. And yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask is for. My dog says, this way I won't give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he says. Right, Mr. Wright, you have nothing to fear in court today. If you are truly innocent, I promise I will save you. Mm, please, let go of my shirt. <coughs> That's right. He's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. 
My name is Mia Fey. I am still pretty new at this lawyer thing. The first time I appeared in court was a year ago. That trial traumatized me so badly. I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then, and well, here I am again. But this time, this time I'm going to win. For my client, and for myself. Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense today is... Mm, miss... Miss Mia Fey, was it? Y yes, Your Honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grosberg was to be leading the defense. Yes, well, you see, Mr. Grosberg had a, a bit of an emergency. Emergency? But isn't that him standing there next to you? Yes, well... You, you're you just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. Of course, Your Honor. I think. Hmm. Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Well, well, well. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Don't worry, little girl. It will all be over soon. What was that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. His hair. <laughs> the murder victim was a student named Dog Swallow. He was a fourth year student studying pharmacology. Hmm, it sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Students discovered this, the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body. And the defendant, who had obviously bungled his getaway, they then called the police. Hmm, that certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accepts this photo into the record as evidence. <sighs> By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. He he he. Your reputation for s sagacity is well earned, Your Honor. The truth is that this, vic this victim died a rather unusual death. An unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? A simple question. I thought I might loosen you up a bit. I am a genteel man, if you will. Mm, a what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. Oh, perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause. Go on. Please say you know at least this much. I I'm so sorry. I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Oh, my hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Now see here. The details of, th of the case are filed under the court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? Well... Considering I've already made my way through like two games. Yeah. <laughs> ah, the court record. I think I can see that by pressing the R button. All of the weapons we need can be found in the court record. Take a good hard look at the at the data there and think carefully before you answer, my dear. Yes, sir. I'll do just that. I gotta stay calm. I can't let that prosecutor get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, let's see here. Cause of death was a fatal electric shock. Sweet. What we got here? Marvin Grossberg, Phoenix Wright, 21. Doug Swallow. Who the hell? <laughs> Dahlia Hawthorne. I believe that in um, in Spirit of Justice, you can actually turn that off, <laughs> which is like the la the latest game. You can actually turn that off. <laughs> now then, would the attorney for the defense please answer the question: What was the cause of death? 
Electrocution. According to the court record, it was a fatal e electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Electrocution? Hmm, but how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some type of new super powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer to that will become crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there is one more vital issue. What's that? My motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? What do you mean? Oopsie, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Payne for you. He's one smooth operator, if you catch my drift. I don't call him the rookie killer for nothing, you know. Now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. E evidence I don't need to get all worked up over this. As I said, all our weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need and then shove it into old Greybeard's face. Yes, sir. Into old Greybeard's face. Um, Mr. Grossberg. Try to set a better example for the young lady. Yeah, evidence isn't the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are there as well. Okay, I know. You can toggle between profiles. Okay, we get it. So be sure to go over it all. Okay. Now then, let's see what you've got. What was the cause of the bad blood between Phoenix Wright and the victim? Obviously, it's Dahlia. The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Faye. You seem to have picked up on at least this much. And this woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But up until a about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. Clearly, she has some part to play in this story. Hmm. He's done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please call your first witness. If it pleases the course, court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Felix Wright. What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Faye? It's fine. After all, Mr. Wright is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. The court calls Mr. Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. He's so tiny, I can't. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes. My name is Phoenix Wright. My job is, um, well, right now I guess I'm a suspect. No, no, he means what did you do before you were arrested? Oh! <coughs> <coughs> I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you are suspected in the death of your fellow student, Doug Swallow. But, but I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling you I was... <coughs> Would the defendant please refrain from passing on his call to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Hmm. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away, Your Honor. Um, I, I admit I was there, but I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. Hmm. I see, so you hardly knew the victim. Right, like I said, I'm not a killer. It looks like the judge understands. Mm. You're being naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that will be... This witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? He's right. Then it's the defense's duty to carry out the cross-examination. The purpose is to determine if a witness's testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? If a witness is lying, their statement will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client. Even if he is a client in court, 
All lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty, you see. What does he mean by that? Is he saying that testimony just now? That there was a lie? A contradiction? Now then, your cross-examination if you please, Miss Faye. Please, Mr. Wright. Tell me you haven't been lying. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? So, you didn't know his face or even his name, right? Right, um, well, no, that is, I mean... So, which is it? Did you know him or not? Oh my God. Now see here, you can't avoid answering the question by sneezing all day. Uh, um, well, I guess I did know his name. News to me, why didn't he tell me that before? Um, I heard he used to date Dolly. Who is this Dolly person? Oh yes, that would be the defendant's lover, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, I see. Ah, young love. So bittersweet. That's all I knew about him. Mr. Wright, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's right. I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him... Then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright? Ah, uh, no, it wasn't me! I'm not the killer, I swear! Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yes, well... He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Did you see it at the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean. Yes, that's right, I saw it at the crime scene. That's why, that's why I figured he must love British stuff, see? It's true, cross my heart. I swear I didn't do it. He's acting fishier than the salmon I ate last night. May I ask you something, Miss Faye? Y yes, Your Honor? What is it now? Who is this person anyway? This Union Jack fellow. The Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag. Oh, I see. So you mean like the stars and the stripes, right? As usual, Your Honor, your insight astounds me. Hey, something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this bit just now? Mia, there's a contradiction here. Mr. Grossberg, quickly now, show that boy you mean business. With evidence, I mean. Okay, Mia, check the court record carefully. Well, my dear, you think you can manage on your own from this point? I can handle it myself. <laughs> One year ago, I was in a courtroom just like this. I can do it. I can handle this myself. Mm. You mustn't try to bite off more than you can chew, Mia. I'll be fine. I know what I have to do. Remember, you can always press him to get more information. Oh, and one more thing. When you're going to state a contradiction, make sure you present some definitive proof. Okay, Mia. One more time from the very beginning of his testimony. I mean... Granted, we can't exactly see his back, but I can't really see a Union Jack there. Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I'm sure. I was right. It was right there on his back. Miss Faye, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket! The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. But if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? You'd have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath that jacket. <laughs> Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me. Please forgive me! 
Virginia, you've made our client cry. Let him. That P on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyways. It stands for pussy. <laughs> I can't believe I trusted him. Mr. Wright was all wrong. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear that this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I, uh, um, yeah, I took some, but... What's the medicine that you took on over-the-counter brand called Cold Killer X? Yeah, that's right. It kills cold good. Hey, wait a second. How did you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it? Does this even have anything to do with the case? Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Uh-huh. Your Honor, I'd like you to take another look, look at another photo from the crime scene. What, what's this? In the victim's hand, it's... It's Cold Killer X! Yes, but even I've got a bottle of cool Clorex in my apartment. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. There's no doubt as to who this bottle of cool Clorex belongs to, especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints are all over it. W what? Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine, dropped by Mr. Wright and hid it in his hand. His purpose in doing so can only have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. Order! Order in the court! Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well, the court will accept them into the record. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation for all of this? Uh, this is really bad. Oh, my buttocks, my poor, poor hemorrhoids. Grossberg, please, stop being so fucking gross. Like, living up to his name, I guess. The truth is, he went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 245 behind that building. We talked for a bit, and then at around 3, we split up. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last 2 or 3 days, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different from the testimony you just you gave previously. Now we get it. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. Hmm, Miss Bay, please begin your cross-examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright, don't tell me any more lies. <laughs> Had you ever met the victim before then? No, never! But that day, he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. And this Dolly person is... My, um, it's kind of embarrassing. She is my, um, sweetheart. Oh, what was that for, Mia? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. Dolly Hawthorne was also the lover of the murder victim, Nag Swallow. Before she met Mr. Wright, that is. Hmm, so it was one of those nasty love triangles, I see. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah, we were both there right on time. Hmm, you said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to, manu how to, how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the alchemist of IVU. An alchemist? I see. I gotta admit I was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. He was filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. 
Oh, how fascinating. He sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details. Uh, yeah. So you're absolutely certain that you met a 245? Wait. right? <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. That's the time class ends. But they're always doing experiments, so it doesn't matter much. Experiments. Yeah, those pharmacology guys are always in the lab whipping up something. Well, it looks like he's right about the time anyway. Witness, let's go on with your testimony. So, what was it you were talking about? You know... Then maybe we should hang out again sometime. Hang out again sometime? I wish that were true. So you say you went back? Um, yeah, that's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, that's right, I was. Then why, Mr. Wright? Why did you go back there? Um, I thought maybe we could w make up. Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one is buying this. It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of the year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? I suppose common sense is not always common. So, did anyone else know that you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after the meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Mm, her mini omelets are magically delicious. <laughs> Ouch! Why did you punch me? Why did you <laughs> turning him into the jaw? Why did you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. Well, Mia. I don't know. I can't seem to find any contradictions. The boy isn't exactly what I'd call a natural born liar, you know. But still, we can't have him continue to spout nonsense. I know, but what can I do? Well, I'm certain he must still be hiding something. Information. Right now, it's information we need more than anything else. Yeah, let me just ask about pharmacology department. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmacology department. Okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in, in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. That's right, and they sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there are high-voltage cables everywhere. High-voltage cables. Yeah, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. The high voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene of some for some unknown reason. Not entirely convinced by his explanation about the cold medicine bottle early either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. What do you mean? <laughs> I knew it was too much work for a little girl. Hmm. Huh. However, there was one mystery that still remains. And there is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? That is, um, I, uh, yeah, correct, Your Honor. So how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? 
I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I could still come out of this mess smelling like a rose. Uh, Your Honor. Yes, Miss Faye. I believe that if we were to piece together everything we've heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That would be the be most impressive. <laughs> Quite a brash statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Hmm, of course I know that. So I had totally forgotten about that. Now then, Miss Faye, let me let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. Oh, it's in this one, I believe. As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture captures it quite well. What? But there is nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Hmm. I'm afraid that the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in this photo is the murder weapon? Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... that's... what is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard? The machines in the... Uh, the machines the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then, the high voltage cable. Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. Hmm. That certainly sounds possible. Plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now. The victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The defendant. Hmm. That much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. Y you do? Well, what is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? Do you mean that the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Sorry, I was just having flashbacks to uh, Rise from the Ashes. <laughs> huh. I you mean? Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright would have, could have left a print like that, intent on murder. He squarely pushed the victim towards a severed electrical cable. Order! 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 That's enough! I think we can conclude that there is no reason to continue with this cross-examination. Stick a fork in us, we're done. M Mr. Grossberg! My hemorrhoids never lie, the show is over, Mia. I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. N no, you're wrong. Mr. Wright is innocent. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Y Your Honor. At this time, I am prepared to render a verdict in this case. Hold it. Do you have something further to add, Miss Faye? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth, the whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. <laughs> Someone give this man some hemorrhoids remedies! Uh, he really just comes to court and just talks about his hemorrhoids all the time, like, shut the fuck up, <laughs> please. <laughs> but, but I can't, I can't just say it. If I told you what really happened, then I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. <clears throat> Miss Faye. No matter what it is you have to say, I believe in you and I'll represent you to the very end. 
You've already established a defendant's guilt. And there's no further need for him to say anything. Wait a minute. Mr. Wright? I... I'll tell you what really happened. But I've already talked to you, Mr. Wright. And there's no need for further... I... I... I did it. I admit it. I pushed him. It's my fault. My fault that Doug Swallow is dead. The girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! What you just said. Was that the truth? Yes, I, I was afraid. I'm afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, we are all absolutely convinced you are. B please! Please give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Fate? I... I believe in you. Oh, um... Thank you. I still can't believe it. You really did push the victim. Oh, it feels like my hemorrhoids are go doing the Harlem Shake. I just want to, like, preface that this game came out, like, before the Harlem Shake. But actually, I made some research on this back when I first played it. Because I was like, Harlem Shake, when the hell did this game come out? It came out before, you know, the song the meme the harlem shake as we know it but like it's actually like an actual dance from harlem i guess but it's just like the fact that it works like even better with a more like um modern version of the harlem shake makes this Worse. <laughs> well, you know, it was back during those days. It's <laughs> it's fine, but yeah, the Harlem Shake is actually something completely different from the Harlem Shake that we know. <laughs> so just fun fact right there. <laughs> Guy was talking bad about Dolly. I had to stand up for my queen. I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just lying there. Dead. Well, the explanation is really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock, and that, as they say, is that. Hmm. A simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. But from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even a doofus like him couldn't miss that. Hmm. Miss Faye. Let me warn you right now that if, you cross, if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he is innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. A loud noise. What would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. 
It was like, snap! You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm treading on some dangerous ground here. <laughs> Ask for more details. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important. So try to remember what it was. Um, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Ha! Huh. Could it... Could it have been... Yes? Could it have been... Hurry up and tell us. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. He fell right on top of it and it broke. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? Did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. Cheap and frail, kind of like the owner. <laughs> Felix, please. And again, I wish I had an, any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. Hmm, Miss Faye. What do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Um, well, of course it's important. This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No. No, this cheap umbrella is more than important. It's vital. I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Ha! Huh. Oh, perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. The court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add the bit about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. But here, he's not on top of his umbrella. It has to be this time. Yes! Sweet. Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that... I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No! Order! 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 The victim. He moved? Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want him presented as evidence immediately. But the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind. According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There is simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. I didn't read what it said, whatever. It's probably not important. <laughs> Knowing it's, it's Winston Payne is probably not important. I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial. But, as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. No! I must say, I still find it hard to believe. That a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. I mean, that's usually how it goes, isn't it? Alright, so this case is like three parts, I see. Well done, Mia! <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Why do you sound like a witch? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through a cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess, you have another witness. Exactly! And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible. Well, who is this witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean Dolly? I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime where the murder took place. 
What? I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20 minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Miss Faye, I, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I... I... It's alright. At least you told us the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah, so I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy. You can't be serious after hiding such important facts. But... But the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know she will. Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She... She's the love of my life, that's why. The love of your life, huh? Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem. Dahlia and I, we first met about eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side, anyway. One day, she and I just bumped into each other in, in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here! Take a look at this! She gave this to me the day we met as a symbol of her love. She had been wearing it around her neck that day, but then... She took it off, but before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. So she gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle is filled with memories of my darling little dolly. It certainly is a little bottle, alright? It makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Um, anyway. So after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating? Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, it wouldn't happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? Yeah, it was. But how did you... This happened on August 27th, right here in this courthouse. What's this, a newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder in the courthouse. M murder What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh, I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You believe there is some connection between these two cases, am I correct? I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I, I need to finish this myself. Uh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, it looks like recess is, recess, is a, pff, recess is about over. We'd better all get moving. I guess so. The recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. Yay, that was the first part. will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. And this next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Ms. Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. What's with this stiff silence? In my long career as a judge, I have been deceived by many witnesses. It's my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that you radiate a glow of complete sincerity. 
I can't believe he actually said that. Oh, um, now then, witness, could you please state your full name? I, um... Don't worry, sweetie. There's no need to be nervous. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them right down to size. And I will brush them with my gavel. I love how they look straight at me when they say that. Um, thank you for calming my nerves. You're all so nice. I almost feel right at home. Not at all. It was nothing. If we may move on now, what is your full name and occupation? My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior in literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine. No, the honor is all mine. Well, we know whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> Something I can help you with. You just go on and say whatever it is, whatever it is on your mind. I'm sure there must be some kind of mistake. Fanny wouldn't kill anyone. I just know it. Yes, yes. I can see why you'd say that. She's going to be a tough witness, all right. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Let's hear about what you witnessed on the day of the incident, if you please. I have been planning to go back to Feeney's place after class was over. Feeney and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. And suddenly, Dougie got all wobbly and just collapsed. That's when Feeney noticed that I was there. I went to go and find some other students and they called the authorities. I, I don't know what to say, according to you, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> young lady, as old as I am, I even I recall how hot the flames of young passion can burn. Nevertheless, it is my job to discover the truth. Please tell us the truth. But, but, I, I would never. That's more than enough, witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, Mia Fey. What's this? So you two are... acquainted? Yes, we've met before. Once. In any case, Miss Fey, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madame Faye. Madame? I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. You'll never get to be either. My... <laughs> Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim. Is that right? I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to Dougie. If I press her for no good reason, I just know the judge will get angry with me. So what should I do about her testimony just now? the article. I didn't check it until now. Murder in the courthouse. Very little information is being disclosed at this time since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse, a cafeteria, is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who was sitting with the victim. I'll leave it alone for now. Hmm. I suppose her statement works in our favor for now. I'll hold off on looking into it any deeper until it's necessary. Very well, young lady. Please go on with your testimony. Bullet. 
When you say students, do you mean students from the pharmacology department? Yes, they're all very fond of their drugs. <laughs> Please try to stay on topic. So, to find some pharmacology students, you went to the labs, correct? That's what I was planning to do, but in the end, I wound up not going. A group of about ten research students came running out of the building entrance. Somehow they all seemed to know what was going on. The students knew what was going on. But how could the students have known what was going on? Well, I don't know for sure what they knew what had happened. That they knew what had happened. I it's just, they all seemed kind of excited about something. Hmm. Doesn't look like I'm going to get any more info about the students. So did the students call the police? Yes. I was just so... I was so panicked. Hmm. Yes, well, anyone would have been, my dear. Girl, she's telling a super obvious lie and she knows it. She's just pretending to protect Mr. Wright. Yes, that's gotta be it. Way to go, Mia. Okay, that means I'm going to have to dig deep for the find to find the con contradiction on this one. <sighs> Let's press everything. Now, unless I'm mistaken, Feeny, I mean Mr. Wright, is in the art department. If that's the case, then what were you doing by the pharmacology building? Well, I'm in the literature department. I'm studying Japanese sendu po poetry. Oh ho ho! How wonderful! It's that humorous yet satirical style of haiku. Yes. Nothing left to do when a man reaches his age. Sleep is his best friend. It's supposed to be poetry? It sounds more like a midlife crisis. For me to get to the art department, I have to walk through that back area. Oh yes, I see. That makes sense. When I want to enter the courthouse, I always walk through the front doors. How else would you enter? Teleportation? So, who is this Dougie person? Oh, I'm sorry, Doug Swallow. We were dating until about eight months ago. So what were Doug, <coughs> Mr. Swallow and Mr. Wright talking about anyway? How can you be so mean? I would never, I would never eavesdrop. I wasn't raised to be so rude and unrefined. That's right, Miss Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level. Why am I being demonized here? Please go on. What did you see next? And what did Mr. Wright say when he saw you? I, I'm sorry, I, I was so flustered that I... I really don't remember. But please forgive me. You don't remember? Well, that's common enough. Sometimes I can't recall a sentence I passed only minutes prior. Please, someone, anyone, stop him before he gets hurt. By me. How's it with this? They're saying that the victim just collapsed. Uh huh. Feeble lies are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them, shall we? What? I, I would never. Miss Fay, I will not allow you to badger this witness. I, I believe the defense is engaged in. Uh, a fishing competition expedition, I mean. That is, um, she has no supporting. Please don't glare at me that, like that. I'm just doing my job. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. It has already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. It would be much better if he came out and told us the whole truth. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything that you saw. Y y yes, Your Honor. I, I will, if you don't mind. I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Doug. You didn't see it? Well, I saw the moment when Dougie fell to the ground. And at that time, there was only the two of them at the scene. The defendant... The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and the victim, Doug Swallow. Yes, that's right. 
It didn't look like they were fighting, and I didn't hear anything unusual either. Oh, that's a contradiction with what Phoenix said. That was a loud snap. You say you didn't hear anything unusual. Is that correct? Yes, that's why I was very relaxed looking at the scenery around me. That's nice, but I find that a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. He said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? I... Well, maybe the noise just wasn't all that memorable. But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise, like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could fall fail to make an impression. Um, may I have a moment to answer? By all means. I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. You see, the truth is, I had my headphones on and I was listening to music at the time. Headphones? You mean that both of your ears were covered? The rain was just beginning to let up, but it seems as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Yes, I'm afraid the sound of thunder... Of the sound of thunder, so I put my headphones on him to block it out. <laughs> well, your honor... As you can see, there weren't any contradictions in our testimony after all. Hmm. Wait a sec, Mia. That testimony just now. She said something that could totally change this whole case. There was lightning? Your Honor, there is a problem with the witness's testimony. What do you mean? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes. What about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere. Am I right? Now is not the time for a science lesson, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? Oh! Hmm, I must admit that the thought had not occurred to me. So what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Doug Swallow was murdered. That very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. It, it appears the defense may be onto something. Could it be that the death was actually accidental? All right, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that not guilty. that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. Oh, huh? I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on the date of at that location. What? What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to this case. Evidence, Miss Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? This affidavit, affidavit I mean. And who is this affidavit from? And the pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out to the court the testimony of the pharmacology students. All equipment in the labs lost power all of a sudden at around 3 p.m. that day. Was it a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. I lost power because of the severed electrical cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m., which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. Hmm, I see. God, I hate doing Payne's voice so much. <laughs> huh? 
It's too close to the, to the judge and I keep getting confused. <laughs> Apparently the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. However, there is one thing that troubles me. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into, correct? Well, I suppose you could say that. Hmm, Miss Faye, do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Y your Honor. I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Well then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Uh... The umbrella? Swallow. Nope. Phoenix? Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony. He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3 p.m., correct? Yes, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying that? The lab equipment lost power at 2.55 p.m., which fits right in Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Yes, the prosecution also came to that same conclusion. And it was that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. What's that supposed to mean? Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. You know, I feel like it's like somewhere between uh, the victim and the electrical pole because... The distance just seems a bit bigger, you know? <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> That's right. The victim banged into that pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Ah. Well, that makes sense, and then the victim was electrocuted. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no, it doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then it couldn't have been electrocuted by this severed cable in the foreground here. In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Order! Order in the court! Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. I it's true. The defense is absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be any way the defendant could have... Mr. Judge, may I say something? The Madame Attorney's explanation. She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. Oh, 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 oh. What the? Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time? Please, Mr. Judge? Of course it's alright. Just go right ahead and give your new testimony. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colors. This Feeny pushed him twice. The first time was into the electrical pole. That's when the cable broke. And Dougie tried his best to run away from him, but Feeny caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted, it all occurred in less than a minute. Hmm. So after being shoved, 
and the victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney, but I, I just have to tell the truth. Am I doing the right thing? Am I, Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Faye, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Oh, my God. That doesn't sound quite right. There were handprints found on the chest of the victim's leather jacket. Mr. Payne, were there also prints found on the back of his leather, leather jacket? Well, um, no, there weren't. Madame Faye, may I suggest that you listen a little more carefully? I said that he crashed into him from behind, right? My feeling wouldn't leave any prints behind in that case, would he? Uh -huh. But then... That's not it. actually witnessed the moment the victim was electrocuted? I'm sorry, I didn't actually see it. I, I turned my eyes away. That's understandable. Yes, indeed. It would have been a horrific sight for anyone to behold. If I don't figure out the contradiction here, it's all over. She didn't have much time to come up with her lie, so this is my best chance. There must be a hole in her testimony somewhere. Think, Mia. Miss Hawthorne, previously in your testimony, you said the following. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. I know, I'm sorry. I wanted to protect Feeney. So that's why you basically lied to the court. I was a bad girl, I know. Um, Mr. Judge? Yes? Would you please, please forgive little old me? Of course he won't. What you did is called perjury. Oh, come now, it was just a little old white lie. We'll forget it this time, but please be more careful from now on, all right? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Judge. Not at all. Ho, ho, ho. The judge had better be more careful himself. A dark alley is friendlier than that girl. You're saying you you actually saw the victim get pushed into, into the electrical pole. I know he doesn't look it, but... Fina can, get, can be a bit of an imp when he wants to be. Oh, really? But I never imagined that he could cause an electrical cable to break. Fina really is scary when he gets mad. Yes, he sounds like a very dangerous individual indeed. So let me get this straight. You were happily listening to music on your headphones while you watched the scene unfold. Uh? Miss Faye, I'll have to ask you to stop badgering the witness. Um, I wasn't happy. I was so scared that I couldn't even move. All I could do was stand there and cheer them on. Cheer them on? What do you mean by that? Well, I wish the best for them both and that they would each give the fight. Their, give the fight their all. Hmm, that's very sweet of you to be so supportive. And what happened after that? I'm gonna run towards the cable though. That's not it.
Yes! Okay, cool. That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine! That's the one Feeny likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Yes, and your point is, Miss Faye? My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered that power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer was clear. It was 2.55 p.m. <coughs> Would you care to explain to the court, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? What exactly happened during this ten-minute interval? The defense proposes that it was during this interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Dog Swallow. Oh, order! Order in the court! This is nonsense! The real murderer! Even you can deny that the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for. And then who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene. Was there a window of opportunity for the real killer? Miss Faye, is the defense ready to indict someone as his killer? As his real killer. It's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor. We are ready. Very well. But remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Faye. Now then, Miss Faye, let's have it. Who is the real killer? It could only have been you, Dahlia Hawthorne. What? How? How can you? The defense is grasping at straws. Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing that whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Order! Order! Miss Faye! What? What? I mean, why? That is to say... Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and, subsequent and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. Ah! How can you say something so mean, Madame Faye? I, I didn't do anything. Miss Faye, this is a very serious charge, you are- I recognize that. Your Honor, please, I have something I want to say. You? What is it? Please, please strike everything the defense j said just now from the record. What the- Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye. Tolly, she- She couldn't do something like that. Mr. Wright, get back in your seat. Bailiff, grab that man. Leave my dolly alone. Oh, God. <sighs> that boy. Oh. That boy. He's gotten himself in way over his head. Oh, Mr. Grosberg, you're back. It seems I've arrived just in the nick of time. Heh, <laughs> in the nick of time. I found the police report in your incident. Oh, that incident in your newspaper clipping. Thank 
you so much. This is exactly what I was hoping for. We'd better take a good look at it. Okay, I'm doing it right now as you speak. Location, District Courthouse, Cafeteria. Date, time, August 27th, 4 p.m. Victim, Diego Armando. Occupation, Lawyer. Suspect, Dahlia Hawthorne. Interesting. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. No poison was found in the vicinity or on the suspect's person. It is unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee cup. I meant to go back. You better take a good look at it. It uh, details how you came to lose your boyfriend. Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, really, Your Honor, I, uh, I, that is, I, uh... May I interrupt you for just a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Oh, don't you worry, my dear, I have this situation well in hand. <laughs> uh, that is, I, um... Oh, go right ahead. Madame Faye, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet ducky? Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Doug Swallow, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. I told you that you should let me handle this. Oh. Oh, sorry, P please go ahead. How can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Feeny. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor little me to bear. I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. It must. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then, that same day, the two of them accidentally meet. Your Honor, the defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Further testimony? What about? About the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What could that possibly have to do with this case? The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant, am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, had a very good reason. Very well then. The court grants the defense's request. Young lady, would you mind staying on just for just a bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Get ready for the battle of your life, Dahlia Hawthorne. How I met my Feeny. I first met my darling Feeny eight months ago. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse's basement reading room. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. We've been going out ever since that fateful day. We're so lovey wobby. We literally make people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. Mr. Wright, do that again and you will be held in contempt of court. Now we enter the final act of our little drama. As we used to say in the days of my youth, go get her. The courthouse reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madame Faye. After all, Feeny was... Feeny was not only an art student, but he was also planning on becoming a lawyer. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a literature, l literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? This line of questioning is a waste of time. It has nothing to do with our murder case. Miss Faye, I'm warning you. If this has nothing to do with Mr. Swallow's case, I have to remember the judges on Dahlia's side. I better tread carefully. Uh, wait and see. Mia, yeah, if the judge gets any angrier, you'll lose the whole case. I'll just have to hold my tongue for the time being. Now then, young lady, please go on with your testimony. Tell us about the time you first met Phoenix Wright. Hmm... So, what was it about Mr. Wright that made your heart malfunction like that? In my personal opinion, he just looks like a typical snotty-nosed college brat. Perhaps so, a woman your age, but to me, Feeny is handsome. Perhaps to you, Miss Hawthorne, but to the rest of the planet, he is a dime a dozen! <laughs> Mia, please! <laughs> Love is 
a mysterious thing, and I object to this line of questioning. If you were to look at my wife, for example, you might all be shocked. He's telling the truth. It was truly, it was truly, truly shocking. Beautiful mushroom, growing tall in the darkness. It comes from cow dung. That's the poem that best describes how I feel about my female. Insult Phoenix, <laughs> pretty much. Were there any bad feelings between you and Mr. Swallow? No, none at all. We parted on very good terms. But that can't be. Our investigation also shows that it was a clean breakup. Huh? Are you... are you sure? Yes, it seems that they both wanted it that way. So the victim wanted to break up with her. So you're saying that Mr. Swallow also wanted to break up with you. Well, I mean, if you listen to his name, it's... <laughs> Quite obvious why. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you see... What a cruel thing to ask a lovely young lady like this. And by the way, I have never once considered leaving my wife. No one cares, Mr. Payne. She didn't deny it. That must mean... Dark Swallow must have seen through her little act. He must have gotten a glimpse of her true nature. Listen to me, Mia. That woman has a, has a judge in the palm of her hand, you see. God, my nose is itchy. So the only way to discredit her is to find a contradiction in her testimony. So until that time, you're meeting Dark Swallow. Did I read this? Yes, I'm a real fool. No, I haven't. I know. Letting my emotions change so quickly. I'm ashamed of myself. No, no, not at all. Look at me. I'm infamous for changing my mind. My critics have even taken to calling me Judge Fickle. Ho, ho, ho. You should look for a different line of work. Despite that, however, he always, always hands down the correct verdict. That's why some people also call him the Great Judgini. Okay. Here we go, this is what I am. Your Honor, if you'll allow me some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her to continue on with her testimony. Very well, young lady, I've got a simple question for you. What were you doing downstairs in the courthouse reading room? If it pleases your Honor... If it pleases your Honor, the answer is simply this. I had come to this courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. You were writing a paper? On what? On the relationship between modern Sandinu po poetry and the criminal underworld. Ho ho ho, that sounds like a fascinating research idea. Am I getting old? I've not even forgotten what I've forgotten. Again with the midlife crisis stuff. Mia, why did that girl really come to this courthouse? Isn't that what you wanted to know? And speaking of forgetting things, you haven't forgotten the police report, have you? They went through a lot of trouble to get it, my dear. So be sure to read it carefully. Objection. Obviously. Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? What is the meaning of that cocky smile on your face, Miss Faye? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? Do you mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect in that incident is listed here in this report. And that name is... Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes, the sweetie pie of everyone's eye. Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Order! 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 It's, this is unbelievable! It's true then, the loveliest rose can hide something thorn. Miss Faye, that's not fair! You can't slander my witness with an unrelated case! Um... I, Winston Payne, will not allow it! Sir Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Uh, pardon me. Go right ahead. It's 
true that about eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me. Hmm, expressed some interest, huh? Mr. Judge, sir, I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that incident eight months ago. I see. Okay, I've tied the two crimes together. Now I've just gotta stay on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh, you really lit a fire in my heart. And my buttocks. Grossberg, please. Shut the fuck up! I can hardly tell which is more inflamed, my spirit or my hemorrhoids. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment and that's when it happened. From what I heard, it was liquid poison that is lethal at just two, 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 two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. Hmm. So that's what happened here eight months ago. God, my nose is so itchy for some reason. <laughs> However, as you've heard from the witness's testimony, she had nothing to do with it. I think the defense is just about out of tricks. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Payne, but I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeve today. And I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. Oh, what the? Why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? You lit a fire in my puddles. <laughs> Aha, Mia, you're glowing with the true lawyer's aura, my dear. That proud posture and self-confidence, absolutely smashing. About how much liquid is two teaspoons? Hmm, well, let me see. My bottle of eye drops said it's... <laughs> half fluid ounce, which is equal to three teaspoons. So it's about two-thirds of that amount, huh? The poison was found in the lawyer's mug of coffee. It must have been after I left the table. Someone must have quietly slipped it in there. A special kind of poison? How so? I heard that it's almost impossible to detect. Oh, and where would something like that come from? I'm sorry, all I know is that I, that's what I overheard the policeman saying. They said something about using advanced chemical processes to purify it. Chemical processes? Well, well that's quite impressive. Most impressive. The better question is, how did the criminal get something like, like that? Hmm... And that's the reason they didn't arrest you. Because no one could show how you could have gotten the poison. I, I think that's a good enough reason. That's a good enough reason, Madame Faye. She's right, and I think we've all had enough of Miss Faye's questions. Hmm. So in essence, the main reason Miss Hawthorne was never arrested for, her, for this crime was because no one could show how she could have obtained the poison. And all we have to do is find a way to establish how she could have gotten some, right? Great. Now just how did a literature student get a hold of poison of all things? No. Here. Didn't you say you were dating a pharmacology student? <laughs> you wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison. I don't believe you. What? In fact, you had easy access to that kind of poison, didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab. Oh, boyfriend? You mean the victim, Dr. Swallow? That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you'll recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at Ivy University. Phar pharmacology? His laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, without such equipment, the culprit could never have obtained such a rare and special poison. Well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then it was a matter of slipping it into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. The only person who could have done that was the one sitting at this very table. You. No! Order, order, order! C could it be? 
Th th that's nothing but a... May I say something, Madame Faye? What is it, Miss Hawthorne? The amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? In order to carry that much liquid, you would need some kind of container. Well, yes, that's true. It was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true. In fact, the entire courthouse was turned upside down. But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. He even mentioned that in the report. Well, you could have easily gotten rid of something that small. Excuse me, madame, but this is a court of law. If you're saying I threw the poison container away, I think you'd need to show some kind of proof. Uh, proof? She got me good with that. Provide some evidence or I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss Faye. Unless we can come up with some evidence, we're going to lose this lead. The police conducted a full body search of Dahlia and of the entire courthouse. And yet the container holding the poison disappeared right after the crime occurred. If you're going to accuse the young lady of, a commi commi of committing the murder... And then where was the container the poison was carried in? What happened to it? You were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. Who, who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. So the defendant was this witness's accomplice? Of course not. She gave the poison to him, disguised as a present. What? But, but that's... Hmm, that's a charming little necklace. It's this little bottle. It's really quite cute. So what about it? What does it mean, Miss Faye? The day the witness met and fell for Mr. Phoenix Wright was eight months ago. August 27th, the very same day as the poisoning incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding the one piece of evidence that would give her away. What? Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? No, there's no longer any poison in that bottle. However, I'm certain that if the crime lab were to analyze it, they would find a trace amount. No! Order! Order in the cart! Ah, uh, um... On behalf of Dolly, I object! M Mr. Wright, control yourself! I won't let you bull bully bully her like this! Mr. Wright, I thought I told you to stay in your seat! Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Why? B because... Because I'm madly in love with her! Hmm. Hmm. Madly in love. I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dahlia Hawthorne want to date you anyway? <laughs> well, I guess she must be madly in love with me too. Mr. Wright. Please, open your eyes. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone. The real reason that Dahlia Hawthorne is dating you is... Dahlia Hawthorne was not... Was not, and is not madly in love with you. The only thing she's after is that bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. My... necklace? Back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. But she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. For Dahlia Hawthorne, that necklace is irrefutable evidence of her crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. You're lying! But you never give it back to her. And to make things work for, wor wor worse for her, you insisted on showing it to everyone you met. That's why she... I don't... I don't believe you. No, that's a lie! Crybaby Phoenix. Mia, are you alright? 
defendant is getting away. Bailiff, hurry after him. I must have been the judge, actually. Mia, Mia, are you all right? Yes, I, I think so. That boy, he went completely insane. Where, where's Mr. Wright? It looks like the bailiff caught him, so he should be back soon enough. Thank goodness. Oh no! What is it? The bottle necklace! Miss Hawthorne's present! It's gone! What? That's terrible! Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me. Foolish boy. That's the only thing that could have saved him. What in blazes are we supposed to do now? Mr. Wright, this sort of behavior was unprecedented in the history of this court. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that your apology is not enough. Mr. Wright, what did you do with the bottle necklace? F forgive me. I, I... I'm sorry. It's okay. Just give back the necklace. You ate it? God, you fucking idiot. Do we even know how potent that fucking poison is? What if that would just kill you? Like, even though there isn't, like... Any left. Like Mia said, there was still, but, like, trace him out, right? So, depending on how potent that poison is... That could be very dangerous. What the hell are you doing? I ate it. You what? You... You... You ate it? It was too big to swallow, so I had to chew it into little bits first. But yeah. Uh... What the... What? What is he doing now? Phoenix, please. Your Honor, you've got to stop the trial. Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright, are you feeling okay? Does your stomach hurt? Bodily swallowed may have had some poison left in it. <laughs> it seems the defendant has proven the prosecution's case for us. Clearly that bottle did not contain a deadly poison. How can you be so sure? <laughs> I think that's obvious. As you can see, the defendant is still very much alive. As for the poison, more like a fledging defense attorney's overactive imagination. Hmm. So it would seem. No, there must be some mistake. The bottle must not have had any poison left in it. Either that or the poison... Poison must have lost its potency. There, there. It's alright, rookie. Trusting our client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see that you place this much faith in Mr. Wright. But that's how it is for us on the prosecution side, too. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. Which is why I can state that your assessment of her is completely wrong. That's enough. Unfortunately, Miss Faye, I cannot accept your explanation of the events. But, 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 but why? This may be impossible for a beginner like you to understand, but in a court of law, evidence is everything. Mm -hmm. Even after I proved so much, is she going to get away with everything? Well, now the suspicion surrounding Miss Hawthorne has been cleared up. I would like to proceed with the trial. Mm Mr. Wright! I'm sorry, Miss Faye. I it totally slipped my mind. I'm... Really, really sorry. I know you believed in me, and I feel like I really let you down. Mr. Wright, what are you trying to say? Um, there's something I forgot to tell you. What is it? That day, the day I met Doug Swallow. Girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. This scene again, I... It's none of your business, but we've gone through this scene, like... Two times already. I'm telling you for your sake, if you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. 
last night, someone stole some poison from our lab. Poison? The same thing happened eight months ago. A drug sample was stolen. She came to the lab that time, too. It could only have been her. That girl is a thief. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! Is it true? Did he really say that? that that's ridiculous! There's one more thing. After I pushed him that day, I got worried and came back to have a look. And she was there. Dolly was right there. She was crouched down next to him. What? She told me not to ever tell anyone about it, but... I'm sorry, Dolly. Your Honor, this is... The defendant is... Miss Faye, you tell them. Dolly didn't do it. She's innocent. So Dolly has stole poison eight months ago too, huh? If you put that together with Mr. Wright's testimony, then there's only one possible conclusion. The defense believes that Miss Dahlia Hawthorne stole some poison on the night before she killed Doug Swallow. The night before? Naturally, her motive for stealing it was to kill someone. Miss Fay. If you're so certain of your theory, then let me ask you this. Yeah, this is your last chance. Think carefully now. There's something that she desperately wanted to get back. Therefore... Exactly who was Miss Dahlia Hawthorne planning to kill? I've solved it. <laughs> I mean, I already knew it, but at the same time I have forgotten, like... This part, I guess you could say. <laughs> Bengi, you there? Dahlia Hawthorne stole some poison from the, 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 the pharmacology lab. So, who was she planning to kill with that poison? Do you have any idea? Okay, I get. Uh, I missed a lot of stuff because of the freezing. So I'm not sure. Uh, no, I know. I know what to choose. I just wanted to like include you, but I guess that's kind of hard. It's it's Phoenix. She was planning to kill Phoenix with poison. There was one person that was standing squarely in Miss Dahlia Hawthorne's way. 
And that person was Mr. Phoenix Wright. M me? That's preposterous. After all, it was Doug Swallow that was murdered. Well, it's true that that's how things work worked out, but let's remember that Mr. Swallow died of electrocution, not poison. The person that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison was, in fact, you, Phoenix Wright. There's no one else that it could be. But, but how can that be? I thought Mr. Wright and Miss Hawthorne were in love. Poor Mr. Wright. This must be killing him. Hang in there. I'll bring her to justice. I swear it. As I said before, the only thing Miss Hawthorne truly cared about was the one piece of evidence linking her to that incident eight months ago. That's right. The bottle necklace. That's all she cared about. But even so, why? Why would you go so far as to murder him? Eight months ago, just after the fall of that attorney in the basement cafeteria, Dahlia Hawthorne could, on could think of only one thing, how to get rid of the bottle necklace as quickly as possible. No, it can't be. It was a pretty good move she made too. The evidence was missing for a long time, but there was just one big problem. Although she got him to hide the evidence, Mr. Wright refused to return it to her. To him, the tiny little bottle was a cherished treasure. He even showed it to everyone he met. He met, sorry, I can't speak. You mean the that? Why she tried to kill Mr. Wright? Correct, Your Honor. It was to retrieve that piece of evidence. It can't be true! Feeny, what a joke you are. Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? I even told you time and time again to keep your trap shut about me and that necklace. You disgust me. Miss Hawthorne. It appears that we are nearing the end of this trial. Fine, I can tell you plan on making me into a criminal no matter what I say. You are a criminal, Miss Hawthorne. We'll see about that. But first, where's your evidence? It seems you, your sniveling little crybaby of a client has eaten the bottle of, as a snack. Uh, well, um... Hey, old man, are you senile or something? Why don't you say something instead of sitting there with that dumb look on your face? Miss Hawthorne, what's happened to you? <laughs> are you really that shocked? Or do you prefer me this way, Mr. Judge? Mm. And absolutely no proof. You treat a voluntary witness like she's a mass murderer. Well, I have nothing more to say. I'll be heading home now, if you don't mind. We're not finished. Fine, then ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. I can't let her get away this time. Stop, Mia. If you keep on pushing without any evidence, you could pay the ultimate price as a lawyer. The ultimate price? You're gonna be forced to take off your attorney's badge forever, I'm afraid. N no! You better think it over carefully, Miss Faye. Or should I say, Miss Gray? Well, Miss Faye, can you provide evidence that would establish her guilt once and for all? If I mess up here, my career as a lawyer, lawyer is over. To be honest, at this point, I don't have any evidence that's well founded. Even so, I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Your Honor, the defense would like to present proof. Impossible! You can't possibly! Stupid woman. It is the opinion of the court that there has already been enough discussion. Therefore, I will allow only one piece of evidence to be presented. Just one? If you are unable to establish your guilt, then I'm afraid that a very harsh verdict will immediately be handed down on Mr. Wright. I understand, Your Honor. I can just imagine the headlines for tomorrow's newspaper. A been-coming lawyer plummets to earth before she gets the chance to soar. She was planning to poison Mr. Wright. If that's the case, then the poison was probably in there. Well then, Miss Faye, 
Please present your evidence. Show to this court a refutable proof that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison Mr. Wright. Cold Killer X. Here it is, Your Honor. The evidence that will prove her guilt once and for all. Cold Killer X? Phoenix Wright's beloved cold medicine. <laughs> Does that work of a defense attorney have a bit of a cold? If I did, I still wouldn't take this cold medicine. After all, it's been poisoned. What? Remember what the defendant said in his testimony. But I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. She was the one who took his bottle of Cold Killer X. Then she poisoned it, knowing that Mr. Wright was going to take some. Now you're really grasping at straws. After all, it was the victim, Doug Swallow, that was holding the medicine. I would like the court to recall the crime that happened here eight months ago. Where did Miss Hawthorne hide the evidence? Huh? Well, what are you talking about eight months ago? The poison was hidden in her bottled necklace. Which she then gave to someone else for safekeeping. Someone she had accidentally run into in the reading room. My client, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes, that's right. She did, the, she did the same thing this time as well. After shoving the victim, Mr. Phoenix Wright left the scene of the crime. That is when the murderer, Dahlia Hawthorne, appeared. And with her, she was carrying the poisoned bottle of Cold Killer X. This, of course, was so she could carry out her plan to murder Mr. Wright. Hmm. I believe she did testify that she was going to meet with the defendant. Yes, and she heard and saw everything that happened at the scene of the crime, including what the defendant and the victim were arguing about, about and the cut electrical cable. That's when she realized, I can't allow Doug Swallow to live. She used the severed electrical cable to silence him forever. Unfortunately for her, this is when the problem occurred. Mr. Wright, who she thought had left the scene, came back to check on the victim. And on top of that, because of the power outage, some students showed up as well. It's hardly any wonder that she was, as she put it, in a state of panic. Recall that she was carrying that bottle of poison cold medicine. Cold medicine. She must have thought, what if they searched me like they did eight months ago? Eight months ago? Yes, she disposed of the evidence exactly the same way as she did back then. She had someone else hold it. In this case, Doug Swallow. Oh, come on now, everyone. Surely you aren't fooled, are you? The stupid woman, she's nothing but a filthy, stinking liar. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? Huh? Yes, that's exactly right. It's just pure desperation. Hmm, I wonder which one of us is, de is the desperate one. So, Miss Hawthorne, this cold medicine, I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking some. Well, Mr. Wright ate that necklace of yours, right? Now it's your turn to prove your innocence. What do you say? If I'm just a filthy, stinking liar, then there's no need to worry. So come on, show us. I dare you to take some of this medicine right now. Mm -hmm. Mia Faye? Mia Faye? Do you think you've won? Well, do you, Mia Faye? <laughs> That's just fine. For the time being, victory is yours. For the time being? Well, I have a very long memory, you know. You and I will meet again. I'm certain of it. Well then, Mr. Judge, I'll see you later too, okay? Huh? Uh, why? Um, yes. I'm going to go spend a little quality time with the men in blue now. I wish you all the best. Huh. <sighs> it's finally all over. I, I refuse to 
accept this. The defense hasn't shown a scrap of evidence to support their outrageous claim. But even so, your witness seems to have accepted it. I don't care. I'm wins in pain. And I don't believe one word that this rookie lawyer has said. Well then, Mr. Payne, let me ask you this. Yes? Would you care to try this cold medicine? What? Just a little earlier, I could have sworn you said. There, there. It's all right, rookie. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. So, if she is so trustworthy, then I'm sure there couldn't possibly be any poison in here, right? Uh, well, um, I see. Um, yes. And here comes the backpedal. Come on now, rookie killer. Show this rookie how it's done. Show how much trust, how much trust do you really have for this woman? Are you willing to bet your life? <laughs> So that's how we lost his hair. Interesting. <laughs> um, Mr. Payne, about Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes, Your Honor. I'll file papers for her immediate arrest. Hmm, tragic, but not surprising. I knew there was something suspicious about her from the very beginning. Speaking of backpedaling... <laughs> Don't lie, just admit you were wrong. By the way, Miss Faye... Yes, Your Honor? Was it just me, or did you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne seem to know each other? Your Honor, whether we did or not has no bearing on this case. Hmm. Very well. Um, uh, Mr. Payne. This can't be happening. It's a nightmare. It's like losing to my daughter. It appears Mr. Payne has lost his spirit along with his hair. Does the defendant have anything further to say? It can't be true. My... Dear Dolly. Hmm. Very well then. I believe I am ready to pass judgment and bring this trial to an end. The court finds the defendant Phoenix Wright. Not guilty. Woo. And this court's adjourned. Huh. Mia, you were wonderful in there. Thank you for everything, Mr. Grossberg. During the verdict, I thought my hemorrhoids were going to explode like Mount Vesuvius. Um, Mr. Grossberg, do you um, maybe think you could stop talking about them? Huh, that's rather rude. Anyway, this case really made me think. What does it really mean to have a relationship of mutual trust with a client? Perhaps it is we... It is we veteran lawyers who have lost sight of this. Oh, Mr. Wright, congratulations! Thanks, um, you know, I was thinking... Go on. Dolly that I saw up there on the witness stand, I don't think that was really her! Um... What? Yeah, the Dolly I know could never have said those kinds of terrible things. Maybe... Maybe she was like, I don't know, a fake or something? Boy, this poor kid still hasn't got a clue. Phoenix is down bad, oh my god. You need to forget about her, Mr. Wright, for your own sake. Yeah, you're right. It's probably for the best. Also, you need to relax a bit more. Try to grow up a little. But, out of all my friends, everyone says I'm the most grown up. What kind of company does this guy keep? Right now, I, I'm studying to become a lawyer myself. That's what you keep saying. But I thought you were in the art department. Well, yeah, I am. But there's a friend that I desperately want to help. He really moved on from Dahlia like this, right? <laughs> He's like, oh no, Dahlia. Anyways. <laughs> and if I hurry, then I should be able to save him. Should still be able to save him in time. I see. Say, Miss Faye. A lawyer is someone who can help people when they're in trouble, right? Mr. Wright, I'm still new, new at this myself, but 
I think that's exactly what a lawyer is. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'll study my butt off. I'll become a lawyer for sure. I hope. I hope we see each other again someday. Maybe even in court. It's been five years since I was acquitted of all charges. I became a lawyer like I planned and managed to save my friend. Friend, okay, cool. But Mia has passed on to a better place. For me, this trial brings up a lot of painful memories. But it also brings up some very precious ones. And memories that I thought would never rise to the surface again. Mia is gone now. But even so, I can hear her in my mind. Phoenix, no matter what, always believe in your client. In a court of law, your greatest weapon is your belief. Five long years. Something has happened that's made me think back to her words of wisdom. But that is a story for another day. Two hours, nice. I'm like tempted uh, to start the next one, but not finish it. I'm not gonna finish it today. That's not gonna happen. I mean, I, I, I could. It's not really like that big of a deal. I mean, it's only been two hours and I feel fine. But wait, let me just check how long it is. First of all, like how many parts? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oof. No. Only six. I don't know why it was listed as eight then. Maybe I was looking at the wrong thing. That's probably it, to be honest. No, not really. Hmm. I don't know. I'm tempted just so I can get through this game like as fast as possible. So I can start the investigations games. By the way, once I get to the investigations games, I'm probably not gonna do like a whole episode per stream because I don't know, I feel like they, they just last very long, you know? Um, so, I think, um, To avoid the streams like getting way too long, I feel like streaming for six hours, that's, it, it is kind of long, but it's kind of doable, at least I feel so, considering how often I sit like, do like six hours. So it's like, see how far I've gotten in like an episode at six hours. If I have like two chapters left, then just like push through it, I guess. But if I'm like halfway, then it's like, okay, I'm gonna just, continue tomorrow i think like that's like gonna be like how i'm gonna go through the games from here on out because that t almost 12 hour stream that was way too long but i'm glad i did it now i know how it feels and i started making up smells it, my mind was just at a really weird place so 
you know what? I think I am gonna try to go through it. Why is this like reloading? I don't understand. Do, do, do. Let's just continue on to the next case, I guess. The time is 1 a.m. <laughs> Detective, we made it. Huh, <sighs> what a relief. Glad the jewel is still safe. Oh, ho, you said it, pal. It must have been a rock solid security that scared him off. Would you mind opening the safe just to double check? <laughs> ah, we've been had! Up front, guards! Turn on the searchlights! Better luck next time, gentlemen. Excuse me, but I'm afraid I must be leaving now. We shall meet again when the next moon is full. I don't want to do the laugh. <laughs> Oh boy. Hey Nick, get a load of this. Hey, are you listening to me? You can clean the toilet later. This is important. <sighs> what are you freaking out about now? <laughs> Today will be the last time you talk to me that way. Huh? We're about to hit the big time. Big time? And what do you mean by we? You don't mean you and me are. <laughs> don't be silly. I'm talking about me and... Pearly, of course. Hello. It's a pleasure to see you again, Mr. Nick. Pearls! You haven't changed a bit. Wait, what are you doing here anyway? <laughs> Haven't you heard, Mr. Nick? Here, take a look at this. What's this? Some kind of poster? Kurain Village. Isn't that... That's right. It's our hometown. Pearly and mine, that is. What's this about treasures from the boonies? <laughs> Very funny. You can laugh all you want. But you'll be singing another tune tonight. Tonight? What about tonight? The treasures of Kurain exhibit doesn't exactly... It uh, doesn't actually start until next week, but... The promoter sent us some special VIP entry passes. That's why I dressed up extra special today. What do you think, Nick? Huh. Same Maya, different day. This young lady here is Maya Faye. The younger sister of Mia Faye, my friend and mentor. I first met her two years ago. I was working on the case surrounding Mia's death, and ever since then... I've been the one who's been keeping this law office afloat from behind the scenes. Actually, that's just a cover for her true identity. In reality, she's a spirit medium and a bit of a shady character. Hey! Who are you calling shady? And this little girl is Pearl Fay, but I usually call her Pearls. She's Maya's cousin and a spirit medium in training herself. God, my nose is so itchy today! What the hell is going on? <laughs> I know I'm a bit young, but I want to help in any way I can, Mr. Nick. So she's nine now, right? Yeah, she's nine. Maya is 19. Mia Faye is deceased, as always. Oh, we get to see Phoenix here now, too! 26, interesting. Q 
Kurain village is the home of the mysterious Kurain channeling technique. And Maya here is the daughter of the Kurain school of school of channeling's master. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's no joke. I've seen her power with my own eyes. It's a real thing, all right. Earth to Nick, how long are you going to make two gorgeous women like us wait? Yes, Mr. Nick, I can't wait any longer. I want to see the exhibit. <sighs> Looks like I don't get a choice here. Might as well head on out. Lordly Taylor, the city's fanciest and most expensive department store. Tre tre treasure exhibit, huh? I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed. Wow, this is awesome! Yeah, you can make even the cheapest junk look great. It all depends on how you display it. Oh, they even have a dusty old hanging scroll that was in the Fame Manor storeroom! Yeah, I remember scribbling on it when I was a little girl. On a family heirloom? Say, Nick, the person in charge of this ex exhibition is waiting for us in the basement warehouse. Alright, I guess we should go and say hello. Yep, this is the basement warehouse, or warehouse alright. And this place is scary. I feel like a monster could jump out at any moment. Any time, I mean. Don't be scared, Pearly. I'll protect you. Oh, Mr. Wright. Yeah, a monster! You were right! Huh? A monster? Good evening. It's good to see you again. You! I know you! <laughs> nice to see you again too, little miss. <gasps> Hello! Is she a friend of yours, Nick? And how do you know her? How do you know her, Pearly? Nice to meet you. I'm Adrian Andrews. I'm in charge of the promotion and planning for this treasure exhibit. I'm also responsible for the security arrangements. Oh, um, nice to meet you. Adrian sure has changed since we last met. So this is the warehouse, and the really valuable exhibit items are still stored away in here. It really has been a long time, hasn't it, Mr. Wright? Nick, what's going on? Who is this woman? Why are you freaking out on me? What? I just thought it'd be more dramatic if I got all worked up, that's all. Mystic Maya, you shouldn't let him off the hook so easily. Please, Maya, don't say anything that'll needle pearls further. Mr. Wright was there for me when I really needed help. It, it was something that happened seven months ago. You remember, don't you? The Nicola Zamorai case? Not really. I was stuck in the dark wine cellar. Did that escape your memory, Nick? After that, I quit being a manager and started this job. Wow, that's tough. I'm sorry, Miss Andrews. If it wasn't for us... No, don't say that. I'm glad the whole thing happened. Thanks to you and everyone else that was involved, I was able to change my whole life. I really am grateful. Oh, that's a relief. I hope she has a lovely girlfriend by now. <laughs> she deserves that. I'm really impressed, Miss Andrews. Handling a huge exhibition like this must be very tiring. Well, Lordly Taylor is celebrating their 200th, 200th anniversary this year. The works on display in the main exhibition hall are worthy of, their, of the finest museums. Woohoo! Did you hear that, Pearly? The finest museums! Yes, I did! It's really wonderful! So this basement warehouse is pretty well protected, huh? Of course it is. After all, there are some priceless treasures here. Security guards are all very highly trained as well. That sounds good, so what is with that face she's making? I wanted to do something nice for you and your friends, Mr. Wright. So that's why you arranged this exhibit. I knew that Kurain Village was a hometown of your assistant, Maya. I thought it would be great to let the rest of the world know about it too. Hmm, but that's not exactly thanking me per se, is it? Maybe, but who'd want to see an ex exhibit on the treasures of Phoenix Wright? I guess I can't argue with that one. I owe a great deal of thanks to that badge. It's the only reason that I'm still here today. Come on now, that's not true. I think what Nick means to say is... 
It wasn't thanks to the badge, it was thanks to me. Tell the truth, Nick. I know that's what you were thinking. N no way, Maya! Okay. I finally managed to put the events of seven months behind me. Months ago, I guess. I really love the work that I'm doing now. Honestly, I owe it all to you, Mr. Wright. Oh, it was nothing. And to this little girl, too. Thank you for saying so! I guess I wasn't much of a help, huh? No, that's not true! You were all a big help to me! She shouldn't take it so personally. It's not like she was exa exactly free to help. Okay, I guess... That's all there is to it. Miss Maya, take a look next to the door! That... that's Mystic Ami, right? Yes, that's the statue of the woman who invented the Korain channeling technique, Ami Fei. This statue is on loan from one of the training halls of the Fei branch family. In fact, it just arrived this morning. What's that creepy looking thing she's holding? Don't ask me, how should I know? Well, you are the future master, right? Maybe so, but this is the first time I've ever seen this statue. That thing is the Kurain Shichisto. No, Shichisto. It's a ceremonial sword. It's not a real weapon, so the blade isn't sharp. Aw, Tuli, I wanted to cut something. What are you eyeing me for? Look, it's already eight. Have you all eaten yet? Um, well, actually, I already made a reservation at the restaurant on the 12th floor. Why don't we all dine together? Oh, I like the sound of that. Dying, it sounds so fancy. I'll have the kids lunch. <laughs> Pearly, it's dinner, not lunch. Why don't you go for it? And really, you're filled with the kids dinner. Okay, in that case, one kids dinner for me. <laughs> Shall we head upstairs then? After that pleasant evening, all that remained was to wait for the exhibition's opening. It was wonderful seeing Miss Andrews looking so happy. None of us could have imagined that the very next day, something terrible would happen. Nick! This is terrible! What the? You're cleaning the toilet again? I never knew you were such a toilet freak. Give me a break, would you? My brain just hit the snooze button for the fifth time. Um, I'm going to turn on the TV. We've got an update on, on, the, on the recent treasure heist. Based on clues found at the scene of the crime, authorities have announced that they believe it was work, work of the renowned phantom thief, Mask the Mask. M mask the Mask? According to a spokesperson, Lord Lee Taylor received a threat letter some days ago. This is, this is the fifth heist by this phantom thief who only targets rare treasures. Lordly Taylor? Well, Nick, what are you going to do? Don't you don't you dare go back to scrubbing the toilet. Treasure? Lordly Taylor? You don't think... Yes! Now get up, Nick! It was stolen by Mask the Mask! Her most valuable treasure. The Kudain Sacred Urn was stolen! What? Refresh my memory a little. What's the Sacred Urn? It's only the most important treasure in Kurain Village, that's all. Look, it's right here. There, on this poster. Don't you remember what's inside? The urn contains a very important soul. Namely, it's the soul of Mystic Ami Fei, the founder of the Kurain's channeling technique. Right, Pearly? Oh, yes! That's right! Hold up. I thought that urn had the name Ami written on it. Now it says I am. Huh. Any idea how that happened, Pearly? Huh? Um, I... well... <laughs> there are some things best left unsolved, wouldn't you say, Mr. Nick? That's right! One year ago, there was a murder in Kurain Village, Maya's hometown. The sacred urn it turned out to be an important clue in that case. 
Okay, the toilet is shinier than the judge's head. So let's see what's next. What's wrong with you, Nick? What do you mean? What do you mean with... Mr. Nick! Your beloved Mystic Maya's treasure has been stolen! Doesn't that even bother you? But I thought the urn was the village tre treasure, so I don't see how... The village is Mystic Maya! She is the future master of the Kurdite School of Channeling! You know what I'm talking about, Mr. Nick. I won't let you say you don't! Okay, okay, I do. So what am I supposed to do about it? Isn't it obvious? Go and find the bad guy who did this! Yeah, and get the cigarette urn back! But I'm not a detective. I'm a lawyer. That has nothing to do with this! If you're a real gentleman, you will fight it for your beloved Mystic Maya! Man, oh man, there's no winning against Pearl's fairy tale Im image of love. So, what's the name of this bad guy again? Mask the Mask, Nick. Take a note of it, Mask the Mask. Is it Mask the Mask? Mask the Mask? <laughs> I am confusion. <laughs> I was terrible, I was arrested and everything. One year ago, the murder in Kurain village. A man was killed during one of Maya's spirit channelings. And this urn wound up being the key piece of evidence that proved her innocence. Um, Mr. Nick? Would you mind not telling Mystic, Mystic Maya about that? You promised, remember? You said you wouldn't tell anyone I broke the urn. <laughs> yeah, about that. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember, this urn used to say Ami on it. Until Pearls accidentally broke it into a million pieces. She tried to secretly fix it. Let's just say it didn't work out so well. Sorry, I'm not so good at arts and crafts. Spelling either. Anyway, this is how her gluing project turned out. She put the pieces together wrong and now instead of Ami it says I am. I can't believe no one's noticed this until now, a whole year later. I can't believe it myself. <laughs> right, let's see if we can find some clues that might lead us to the bad guy. But it doesn't look like anything has been disturbed. And it looks pretty much the same as it did last night. Hmm, bad guy, huh? Hey, you can't poke around here, pal. I figured it was him. Wait a minute, that voice. Oh no, not him again. It's you! And I'm the one who should be saying not again. Why is it every time, every time something bad happens, you always show up, pal? I should be asking you that. Aren't there any other detectives? No, I should be asking you that. What are you doing hanging around here? Can I ask you first? Why are you here any- Alright, alright, we got it! Why don't you two kiss and make up- <laughs> Um, hello! It's been a long time, Mr. Scruffy Detective! Oh, it's you, little missy. Um, uh... Actually, my name is Gumshoe, Detective Dick Gumshoe. There was a good chance for you to try to remember it, right? And if it's too long for you, you can just call him Dick. Okay, it's good to see you again, Mr. Detective Dick. Um, yeah, good to see you again too, I guess. Um, Mr. Detective Dick, can you tell us about what happened? Well, you're trying to remember my name, Atta girl. Um, just it. It's Gumshoe, alright? Anyway, the thief stole something called the Sacred Urn. I know about that. Oh. Well, the criminal's name is Mask the Mask. I know about that too. Detective, can't you tell us something other than that? Well, I guess I sort of kind of owe you guys, in a way. The crime occurred last night at around 1.30 in the morning. How exactly do you know that? We got an emergency phone call from a guard at the scene of the crime, pal. He said the urn was just stolen. The scene of the crime, you mean here, right? Wrong. That urn was being kept under careful guard in the basement warehouse. Basement warehouse, huh? Um, so who was guarding this 
The basement warehouse. That guy, it's all his fault. But the thief got away, pal. He solves one case and gets swelled, he swelled head, thinking that he's, the he's an ace detective. Uh, ace detective? So, why do you call him an ace detective anyway? That's what he calls himself, pal. I didn't make it up. So, what's he like? Well, like I told you, Mask the Mask has made, has made five heists so far. Okay, thank you for dropping by. See you later. On the fourth heist, Mr. Ace Detective managed to get the stolen treasure back. You too. Good night. That, that is impressive, all by himself? Yeah, I gotta admit it, pal. Maybe he really is as good as he says. Every time the thief sends one of his calling cards, we send our men on a stakeout. But none of us has ever gotten so much as a glimpse of the guy. But Mr. Ace Detective was able to retrieve the stolen treasure from the thief. Anyway, he's at the scene of the crime right now, looking for clues. So he's down in the basement warehouse, huh? Cluing for looks. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, about this mask to mask. Is he famous? What? You're joking, right, Nick? Mask the Mask is the hottest thing since sliced bread. Sometimes he appears as a museum guard. Sometimes he appears as a big brown bear known to surprise unsuspecting victims. But underneath those disguises is the true Mask the Mask. So he's some kind of master of disguise, huh? And he only goes after the finest works of art, pal. Last night was his fifth heist. If Lord Lee Taylor had, had only cooperated, I could have caught him in the caught him this time. What? Then you knew he was planning on stealing the sacred urn? Of course I did. The guy always sends his calling card before he steals something. Calling card, huh? I mentioned that on TV. No. Sometimes it starts me at the top and other times it just doesn't. Oh, why is this the longest one? There you go. So what's this calling card? Here it is. But don't show it to anyone. It's top secret, okay, pal? What's this mark on the front? It's Mask the Mask signature emblem, pal. You could say it's his mark. All of his calling cards have got it on them. He didn't mention that on the newsflash. We're withholding that detail from the public for operational reasons. The only way we can tell if, if a calling card is real or not is by this emblem. That makes sense. When you get famous, there are always some imitators. Mr. Nick, if you work a little harder, maybe you can have your own copycat, copycat someday. Um, uh, thanks, I guess. No matter how many times we come here, this place always gives, gives me the chills. That's probably because it's air-conditioned. To protect the art pieces, you know. Welcome to my private little banque banquet of chaos. Huh? What the heck does that mean? I'm afraid I have very little to offer, but please, make yourself at home. Oh my god, my nose is so itchy! Uh, um, who are you anyway? Shh, silence! <laughs> now I see, it's all becoming clear. What do you see? Svari! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. A lawyer and a spirit medium, neither very advanced in their trade. Am I wrong? Hikes, that, that's scary. How did you know that? How, you say? The universal skeptic would say that is... That how is nothing but a question of why. I am a traveler of both time and space and a swimmer of dreams. What is he talking about? I can't make heads or tails of it. Without further ado, let me fulfill what should be the first duty of any gentleman. And introduce myself. The name is Apme. Look at me. He's, he really said, I am feeling comfortable when we are not about me.
His name really is Look At Me. Okay, Look At Me. Nice detective. Oh, um, hi. Don't let him intimidate you, Nick. Stand up and show him what you're made of. Uh, um, the name's Wright. Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. He said the thing! He said the thing! That's it. I can- I can- I can- I can end the stream now. Cool. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> ah. I'm Maya Fey, a spirit medium. And I'm, um, Pro Fey. I'm Mystic Maya's cousin and, um, spirit medium Ace Apprentice. Excellent. Well then, shall we begin our little game? Game? Why does the phrase one short of a baker's dozen come to mind with this guy? Um, so are you really as famous as you say? Of course, for a lawyer, you have a rather shock lo shocking lack of knowledge about the word. World. I had no idea anyone was left in the city that had not heard of me. Look at me. I am Mask the Mask's arch enemy, the ace detective. Look at me. Look at me. At this moment, there are two mighty figures which loom large over this grand city. One embodies the nefarious forces of darkness, the other the angelic cherubs of light. Boy, now I'm really lost. What is he saying, Nick? I have been personally on the heels of this villain since his first crime. After learning this criminal's patterns, I thwarted his very latest loathsome larceny. I even returned the target of his tyranny, the portrait of Medina, to the crime scene. And I did it all by myself. I took it back from the mosque. With my brawny mind and my brilliant muscles. Yeah, they mentioned it on the news in the great in the great people around town segment. They said that the museum gave you an incredible jewel as a reward. Well, compared to the treasure that I retrieved from them, it's for them, it's not much. So in the end, the only thing that makes you great is your own self-praise. Well, tell us what you know about Mask to Mask, and keep it simple, please. Like about how I have devoted my life to thwarting his dastardly deeds? Last night, here in the bowels of this store, we were locked in the most glorious battle. I see. Huh? Hang on a second. You were here last night? Here? In Lordly Taylor? Naturally, wherever, mask the mo where th wherever the mask goes, we'll find Abney. Laying his elegant traps. Now my eyes are itching too. God. <laughs> Elegant traps. More like the mask out elegance you and made a beautiful get getaway. But this time I allowed him to escape for the illusion of victory. I wonder if I should ask him about what happened last night in more detail. Um, can you tell us exactly what happened here last night? But of course, after all, I always say there's there should be no secrets between aces. <laughs> Flatter we will get you nowhere, Pinocchio. <laughs> Sorry, some of these phrases are just golden. I first received my, the request for my services 20 days ago. I'm gonna actually get that line and I'm gonna use it as a meme. Huh. The request for my services 20 days ago. And it was 10 days ago that we received Mask the Mask's calling card. Huh? You were hired before the calling card even arrived? Yes, and you see the person who hired me is quite rigorous and thorough. That's Adrian for you. A mere ten days after hiring me, her worst premonitions were realized. Calling card arrived, right? Yes. So, ace detective that I am, I set a trap for the thief right in the warehouse. And waited for him. Alone. Alone? But why? Why didn't you go to the police for help? Ridiculous. Why would I seek help from such a sing singularly useless group of nincompoops? You've got a lot of nerve. After all, it was you that let the mask get away. I always operate alone and concealed, out of the sight of others. Concealed? Precisely. Even the guards on duty here were unaware of my presence. To fool your enemies, first you must fool your friends. It's my own original proverb. Anyway, back to what happened last night. As I was saying, I hid her in the warehouse and waited for the thief to arrive. 
but I swear to you, not a solitary soul came through that entrance. Nevertheless, the sacred urn disappeared. But that's impossible! How could it just disappear? How, you ask? Don't be ridiculous, sir lawyer. If I knew the question to that question... To, to, if I knew the question to that answer... If I knew the answer to that question, I wouldn't be here. For someone who seriously messed up his own stakeout, he's rather full of himself. So you're saying that even though one... The one... No one came through those doors last night. Our precious urn still somehow vanished from under your nose. That's just not possible. Okay, time to look around. Sir Lawyer, please refrain from such crude behavior. Huh? What do you mean? This criminal is an artist. The crime scene is the canvas upon which he paints. Only I, Ace Detective at me, have an eye which is educated enough to read the signs. Could you translate that for me, Nick? I think you pretty much said, don't touch anything, amateurs. If there's something you wish to know about, you have but to ask at me. I know everything there is to know about my rival Mask the Mask. What do I do now? Does he have any top secret information? Stuff that only a real crime buff would know? I'll think about what to ask while I listen to what Mr. Ace Detective has to say. You weren't there last night. Yeah, I can't look at anything. He won't let me. Not the. Okay. But do not fear. Oh, I thought. It's so hard to tell it sometimes. Final round between Detective Luke at me and Mask the Mask is set to begin. Still, there's something funny about this guy. Yeah, but don't forget he managed to retrieve the treasure from the last heist. Yes, I even have a video that details my role in the whole affair. I recorded it directly from the news on TV. Can I interest you in a copy? No thanks. Let me just do that again so I can see. Do not fear, young lady. I promise I shall retrieve your urn. Thank you, Detective Apme. I'm counting on you. Okay, that's it. Okay, can't tell me about that. Mask the Mosque's calling card. It's got his emblem printed on it, right? Quite impressive, but I would expect nothing less from my arch rival. I'm surprised to see you in possession of such a top secret piece of information. Well, we've got an ace lawyer, an ace spirit medium, and an ace cousin apprentice here. Yes, indeed. I think I could learn to like you, my fellow ace professionals. I don't know if I really want to want this guy to like us. Ever. Well, sir lawyer, I've been told that you, you too are pursuing the mysterious thief. Well, I'm not sure I would say... That's right! We're going to find the sacred urn no, ma no matter what we have to do. Excellent. I will trust you. I permit you to take a look around while I investigate elsewhere. If perchance you should discover something of value, return then to my office. My office of Earthly Delights, the APME Detective Agency. The office of Earthly Delights? Well then, sir lawyer, if you'll excuse me, I have much to do. Wait a minute! He's gone! I don't like the idea of doing this guy's work for him. Come on, Nick. Don't worry about it. It's no big big deal. Let's hurry up and investigate before he changes his mind. I want to go to his office too. Take me with you, okay? Sorry, the PC actually. Hey, Pearly, do you know what this is? It's a computer. A computer? Well, I've heard of those. It has such a cute name. Looks like this computer is for storing the data from the security camera. When someone comes in or out of the warehouse, the camera takes a photo of them. It's probably the trap that the detective set up. Let's see if we can find last night's last night's data on this thing. And we might even find a photo of Mask the Mask. Hmm, let's see here. Yeah. I really stink at working these things. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? You're sweating an awful lot. I don't know how to pull up the photos. 
I had no idea you were so pathetic with high-tech stuff, Nick. Yeah, well, I managed to print out the camera data anyway. I guess you have to learn to crawl before you can walk, right, Nick? Yeah, sure. Anyway, it looks like the camera only went off once last night. This box. That pathetic looking wooden box. Huh! That's the box that, the, that had the sacred urn in it. Don't touch it. There may, may be clues to the thief's identity on there. Uh, I worked so hard to make that box. Huh? You made that poor excuse for a box, Maya? What's that supposed to mean? That urn has always been on its stand in the winding way of Fay Manor. Winding? Yeah, winding. There was no box suitable for it, Mr. Nick. And I was so proud of it. <laughs> Poor Maya. Maybe it, maybe it had been better if Mask the Musk had taken the box too. Wow, this is awesome. What did Miss Andrews say it was called again? Shichishto. It's literally a seven branch, branch sword in Japanese, or so says Miss Andrews. It is Shichi. Is another word for seven, which is nana. So we have shichi and hachi. That's seven, eight. Uh, and I guess... Uh, shito. That must be like the branch sword. If I had to take a guess. <laughs> Oh, it's pretty heavy. One hit seven times the fun. Pretty catchy, huh? I bet it'd sell like hotcakes. Um, there's something about that about it that bothers me. Oh, you're really firing all cylinders today, Pearly. The sword. Wasn't Mystic Ami holding it last night? Oh my god, I have to go and do something about my fucking nose because this is this is insane. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna just go. BRB for a while. Nope, wrong thing. Nope, not that. That.
Oh yeah, I'm back. Ah! And another thing. The sword wasn't bent last... Last night like it is now. You're right. Awesome, Pearly. I wouldn't expect any less from my little ace apprentice. The sword is bent, so that must mean... Last night, someone used it somehow. Aha! I just thought of something. Maybe Detective Apme smashed Mask the Mask with it. Like this! Ouch! What the heck? What do you think, Pearly? I think it's even more bent than it was before. Oh man, my head... My hair! Look what you did, Nick. You spilled paint over here. I didn't do that! Well, it wasn't here last night. I would have noticed the color this outrageous. But this paint is already dried up. Well then, you should have cleaned it up before it dried, Nick. Paint doesn't dry that fast. Besides, I told you it wasn't me. I mean, that depends on the paint, really. <laughs> it looks like it's been several days since it was spilt. Hey, look at this. What is it? There's some kind of shape left in the bottom left side of the stain. Huh, you're right. I wonder what it could be. The statue of Mystic Ami is so cool. I want a gold statue of myself. We could put it in the office. Hey, it's right, Uncle. How about a gold statue of me? Um, Mr. Nick, I'm sorry, but I noticed something strange. What is it, Pearls? The statue of Mystic Ami. Was this where it was last night? Huh! I'm pretty sure it was closer to the door. Yeah, I think you're right. Great job, Pearly! I wouldn't expect anything less from my ace cousin. So the statue was moved on the night of the crime. Mr. Nick, what's the big door over there? It looks like it's the door to the actual storeroom. I can see lots of big boxes and stuff back there. Guess that's where they were keeping the sacred urn. Remember, Maya, Miss Andrews said we're not allowed in there. As a stepladder. So, what's the difference? You need to stop judging things based on narrow minded cultural assumptions, Nick. Right, sorry. I don't feel like we've had this exact same conversation before somewhere. <laughs> Me, every time I see, see a stepladder. Oh, yes, press that beach. <laughs> it's a security camera. No, it didn't work. My nose is still itchy for some reason. It's trained on the big door to the storeroom. I still have to take a photo of anyone that goes in or out. A security camera? Yeah, go stand in front of that door and it'll snap your photo too, Pearly. Um, Mystic Maya, do you think I should smile? Nah, it's for criminals, so I think you should make a really scary face. Like this. No, like this? Cute. It looks like a part of a big signboard. All I can read on it is the burr. Aha! I've got it! Maybe it's supposed to say hamburger. Why would anyone want anyone write ham hamburger that big? Like, maybe for the World Hamburger Festival or something. I kind of doubt it. Aha! I've got it! Maybe it says spaghetti. Why are you talking about food? Oh, wait. That's normal for you. Anyway, it says burr. There's no way it could be spaghetti. Well, maybe it was a typo. It might have said spaghetti festival. What do you say? What do you think? Okay, to me, besides spaghetti... Uh, okay, to me, besides spaghetti is the only thing more tangled than your reasoning. It says organi. No, it doesn't, Nick. It says organize. You just can't see the last two letters. 
Yeah, well, I guess no one else could read, read it either, because this place is a mess. Yeah, you must feel right at home, huh? Maya, please. <laughs> I believe I've looked at everything here now. Hey Nick! Your cell phone's ringing! Hello, Phoenix right here. Oh, <laughs> It's me, Gumshoe! Gumshoe! What is it? What's so funny? I'll tell you what's funny, pal. I finally beat him! I finally beat Mr. Ace Detective! Finally, this underdog is the alpha dog today that stuck up detectives met his match. Yup, I finally caught him. Lock, stock, and barrel. There is no escape for him. You caught him? Are you saying... You... You captured Mask the Mosque? Mingo! Well, actually he surrendered, but I still got him. Mask the Mosque surrendered? That's great! So when can we come and pick up the sacred urn? Um, uh, well, you see, I was gonna tell you. What? Something wrong? You think you can swing by the detention center sometime? The detention center? He wants to talk to you. Mask the mosque, that is. What? He wants to talk to Nick? I'll be waiting for you, pal. So get over here soon. The detention center, huh? I didn't mean to go here, but you know, it's fine. Is this a detective agency? Looks more like the set of some B-grade horror movie. Hello? Is anyone here? Looks like nobody's home. Huh. What a waste of time. Hey, I know! Let's take that framed picture back with us as a memento. Don't you dare, Maya. Guess we'll have to try back later. Moving around this game is hell! Hey pal, welcome to the detention center. You're sure in a happy mood, aren't you? Yep, after all, we got masked and Right, but... Um, so where's the sacred urn? Oh, sorry about that pal, I guess I didn't really think about it before. You're the victim in this case. Huh? Well... I guess I should let you guys hear the story straight from the horse's mouth. You know, he's right, Nick. He is? If you think about it real hard, we are the victims. Well, I guess so, in a way. Um, I'm so used to thinking of the victim as a dead person, because we're always on murder cases. E excuse me? But anyway, I have to get the sacred urn back. Please! Don't just ignore me! Uh. Um, who are you? I, uh, ma I, 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 m ma 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 mask the mask? Uh, okay. So, this is another character that is based on BL. I kid you not. This, like, meek, shy little boy. <laughs> hey, Nick, doesn't he look kind of, well, gangly? I'm Ron Delight, the famous Mask the Mosque. I don't think this guy could punch his way out of a wet paper bag. So you're the mask. You're the mosque. The mask guy. Y yes, you bet. No, uh, that's that's wrong. You see, it's complicated. Sort of yes, and sort of no. If you know what I mean. Huh? What's wrong? Well, when I say wrong, what I really mean to say is that it's not right per se. You see, it's not spelled mosque. The mask. It's actually mosque. The mosque. What's with this guy? Well, he's a timid little weakling, we know that much. Don't do that! Don't do me like that! I don't need your pity! 
And a major crybaby too. So, why did you give yourself up? Well, you see, it's because, well... I know why, it's because you stole such a priceless treasure. And now you're overwhelmed with guilt, am I right? Priceless treasure? That broken old urn? Um, I have a little favor to ask. Y yes? What is it? Could you go and talk to Desi? Desi? So, who is this Desi person? Please don't talk about my wife like that! I guess she must be his wife. <laughs> I'm sorry, but truth is, it was my wife that told me to have you all come here. Um, do you think you could go and visit her at my hideout? Uh, hideout? Mr. Nick, what does he mean by hideout? Oh, sorry, naturally, I meant to say my secret base. Secret base? Well, my apartment, actually. Palazzo Palpe Palpepe, third floor. Let's go have a look, Nick, to Mask the Mosque's hideout. Something tells me she just likes the sound of the word hideout. Tell me about the secret urn. Look, we really want our urn back, so where is it? I'm sorry, I'll give it back. I really will. Um, maybe not. No, I can't. I can't make promises I can't keep. I'll just end up hurting people. Um, Mr. Nick? I couldn't hear what he just said, especially that last part. Um, Mr. Damask? Uh, do you think you could speak up a little? Y yes, sir. I will, I promise. Uh, maybe not. You see, I'm already speaking in my normal voice, so I, can't really, I really can't do anything. Mr. Damask, about the urn. Oh, yes, the urn. Right away. Uh, actually, no. I wouldn't mind telling you, but actually, I'm afraid you wouldn't believe me anyway. Enough already. Just tell it to us straight. Please. Please don't yell at me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry. That urn, I... I lost it! What? What did you just say? Did you say you lost it? Yes, uh, no, um, maybe so. I mean, yes, I lost it. What do you mean? Well, you know, I lost it. Like I said, these things just happen. You're on the trade and you get distracted and you forget your bag, you know. What? You forgot our sacred urn on the train? Wait a minute, you went on a train dressed like that? No, I, I, I was just speaking hypothetically, that's all. Anyway, I'm sorry, I just lost it somewhere, I don't know where. This guy's story is more surreal than a dolly painting. Are you really sure this creep is Mask the Mosque? Maya, don't call him a creep. Although I do have to admit, I understand your doubts about this guy. I'm really sorry I caused so much trouble. If you're so sorry, then you shouldn't have stolen it in the first place. But the only thing I did wrong was lose it. Uh, that's not right. I was wrong either way. I'm sure the owners of the old other treasures feel the same. You sure seem sorry. Who would have imagined that such a famous thief would have such a pure heart? Oh! And that's Mask the Mask's calling card. Pretty nice looking, huh? He looks so happy. Not very good at writing, you see. So I bought a book called How to Write Business Letters and studied hard. Well, I guess you could call theory thievery a type of business. Him! Do you know him? He claims to be your arch enemy and rival. That person. He's not my arch enemy or my rival. Well, actually, no. Now that I think about it, the terms arch enemy and rival are the same thing. They are rivals. Only people who have it out for each other would disagree like this. He won't talk about himself, Cole. Well. Since I was a little boy, I've always been interested in mysterious masked men. You have what now? 
I'm sorry. <laughs> what? So that's what you wanted to be when you grew up. Yes. Uh, no. Sort of, but not exactly. I never imagined I'd feel as bad as I do now about the treasures being stolen. People sure can be complicated, can't they? Sorry, I'm just thinking about the Ace Attorney anime uh, dub blooper. Wow, check this place out. No doubt about it, this is Mask the Mosque's hideout, all right. Who is it? Is that you, Ronnie? Huh? Who are you people? Uh, um, are you Desi Delight? That's right, I'm Desiree. Huh, well you must be the lawyer and the victim. Yeah, that's us. Your husband told us to stop by and speak with you. I'm Maya Faye and this is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. Mickey Boy and Maya, huh? I can't tell you how grateful I am that you decided to help my Ronnie. Well, um... <laughs> you're welcome. Did she really call me Nikki Boy? Um, about your husband. <laughs> Isn't he the cutest? The cutest? I can't think. A bit weak sometimes, though. A bit? By the way, did you know they mentioned Maya on TV? Huh? Really? They said you own the urn and that you're doing some shady training at a law office now. Remind me not to watch that channel's news program. After I saw that, I thought it might be a good idea to meet the lawyer they mentioned. I see. My Ronnie, he has a powerful imagination and gets eluded easily. He kept insisting he was going to surrender to the police. I didn't know what to do. It was me! I stole the urn! He kept saying, as if it was even possible. Huh? But are you saying he didn't? <laughs> of course he didn't! Why would my Ronnie ever do something like that? Well, you know, it's a priceless treasure and... And he's... You know... Is it possible his own wife doesn't know his secret identity? Me? I'm the kind of woman that needs excitement in, in her life. Oh, excitement, huh? Yes, I'm at my happiest when I'm racing along with my bike going at full throttle. Riding a motorcycle is like putting your life on the line, you know what I mean? Well, I think that depends on how you ride it. I'm the type that can't stand living a boring, dreary old life with no action. No offense, but your husband, Ron, doesn't exactly look the, the risk-taking type himself. You're right about that, he's definitely not one for thrills and danger. But I do have to say that he makes up for it in other ways. <laughs> the ma'am? Other ways? Yes, money. Ronnie is incredibly rich and super generous. I'm sure. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. He bought me a bike that's so fast it would make your head spin. And shopping? I like to shop so much it makes Ron's head, Ron's head spin. Women be shopping. I forgot to turn on the lights. I didn't even turn on my... You know what? Screw it. I feel like this is like a representation of my mental state right now, so it's fine. The other day it actually happened. His head actually started to spin. Man, talk about a high maintenance wife. So where does Mr. Delight get all his money from? Money is a security guard. They put their lives on the line, right? So they get paid tons of money in return. Tons of it. He's a security guard. I think it's my turn for my... My turn for my head to spin. Can you tell us about what happened last night? Hmm, what time did that incident take place again? What time was it again, Maya? Well, according to Detective Gumtree, it was around 1.30 in the morning. Ah, oh, last night was horrible. I got pulled over. M pulled over? Yes, I always do my best flying at night. Flying? Um, you're talking about your motorcycle, right? Yes, anyway, last night I got pulled over by a policeman. I can't believe he caught up to me. It was a great chase, let me tell you. When he finally caught me, the poor man was as white as a sheet. It was about 3 in the morning when I finally got home. Sounds like she's got an airtight alibi. Well, what about Mr. Delight? 
I don't really know. We weren't together at that time of the night. But when I got home, he was already fast asleep. So basically, he's got no alibi. Interesting. What about the mask the mask stuff? Mask the mask, mask the mask. Mask the mask. <laughs> um, Mr. Light, you must know, right? About your husband and mask the mask. Mask the mask? Of course, I know all about it. My husband is his biggest fan. Yep. What? Huh? The biggest fan? Yes, and Ronnie can be pretty delusional sometimes. That's how this whole misunderstanding happened. Wait a minute. Did you just say delusional? Yes, that's right. I just don't know what I'm going to do with him. You see, Ronnie actually believes that he is Mask the Mask. What? What are you talking about? So, when did Ron first become Mask the Mask? What are you talking about? He's not Mask the Mask. Uh, but, wait a second. Look around at this room. This place is obviously Master Mosk's hideout. No, no, you're totally wrong. A real thief's hide hideout wouldn't look like this. It's because Ronnie is so timid himself that he looks up to heroic figures. Heroic figures? But Master Mosk is a bad guy. So he's deluded, huh? Could that really be true? Anyway, if he really had stolen the urn, wouldn't he still have it? Well, I suppose so. Then why don't you ask him if he has the urn or not? She has a point, Mr. Light isn't exactly the criminal type. But something about Ron's behavior bothers me. Maybe it's true. Maybe Mr. Light isn't Mask the Mask after all. Say, can I ask you something, Nicky Boy? What is it? I know it may seem like a bad girl on the outside, but the one thing I won't stand for is illegal activity. I have the feeling you wouldn't. You're tough, but I can tell you've got a good heart. Ma'am, weren't you speeding? <laughs> Somebody framed my poor Ronnie, I just know it. Um, could you give this to Ronnie for me? A letter? Yes, for Ronnie. I want him to fight back. Mr. Light. Okay, you got it. Just relax and leave it all to us. Oh, that's right. Here, this is from your wife. Oh, from Desi? Thank you. <laughs> Given to Mask the Mask. Actually, more like taken. My dear Ronnie, how are you? I'm doing fine. He's clutching onto that letter so hard, the ink is going to be squeezed out. He looks so happy. You should write a letter to Mystic Maya too, Mr. Nick. Um, Mr. Lawyer? Yes? In the letter that Desi wrote, she said, Ask this guy to be your lawyer. Huh? Uh, um, I know this would be asking a lot, but... Could you please take my case? My trial starts tomorrow. Hey, hang on a second. He can't be your lawyer. Why not? What do you mean, why not? We're the victims in this case, right? Victims of this Damas guy. Well, yeah, but according to Desiree... He didn't do it. She said, poor man, he has deluded himself into thinking he did it. Right, Nick? Right, Mr. Nick? Come on, she could be lying to protect her husband. Well, that's true. Uh, no, actually not. Actually, it's hard to say. Oh no, it's spreading. Oh, please, I'll give you the treasure of your, of your choice in return. Hmm, what should I do? Well, Mr. Delight, I've decided to give it a try. I'll defend you. Really? You will? Hey, what are you doing, Nick? He's a thief. You can't trust him. Well, he may be a thief. But I think there's more to this case than meets the eye. M Mr. Nick, I was wrong about you. I shouldn't have trusted you. P Pearls? I can't believe you defend this person after what he did to Mystic Maya. I, I, I'll never forgive you, ever. Pearly, wait! This is going to be ugly. I'll go after her. I'm sorry.
sorry about that. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Well, you couldn't have known she'd react like that. I guess I might as well start investigating. Oh, Maya. Where's Pearls? She said she's going back to the office. I'll go check in on her later, would you? And what about you? Are you okay with me taking Mr. Light's case? Yeah, I'm fine, Nick. I believe in you. <laughs> I think I'm going to cry. Um, I, uh... I know you have a lot of work to do. I, I really appreciate it. Okay, Nick. Let's get this show on the road. Huh. Mr. Nick! Welcome back! Oh, hey, Pearls. You're back too, I see. I, uh, what I bought is a strawberry cake. I'll go make some tea to go with it. Hey, uh, Pearls? Looks like she feels really bad about what happened at the detention center. This literally just happened. I don't need to go through this one more time. <laughs> Mystic Maya, the tea is ready. Oh, thanks. Come on, Mr. Nick, please have some of this cake. Yeah, thanks. Um, pearls? Oh, excuse me. I was in the middle of cleaning the toilet. Hey, it's okay. I just cleaned it this morning. Too late. This might be a good time for me to ask about her. I first met Pearls a year ago. It was when that murder happened at Kurain Village. I still remember what she said to me when we first met. You, you're Mr. Nick, right? You're... You're Mr. Gamaya's special someone. Hey, Maya, I've always thought it was because she was young, but... But what? Pearls, I think she's got the wrong idea about you and me. Huh? Uh, I... Um, there's something you need to understand. What is it? Um, it's kind of like a Kurain Village custom, sort of. There are hardly any men in Kurain Village. Now that you mention it, I never actually saw any men there when I visited. visited. I'm pretty sure I told you about it a long time ago, about how spiritual powers run very strong in the Fey family. Yeah, you did, and that's why you're undergoing training to be a spirit medium, right? Yeah, the thing is, only women can actually inherit the spiritual power. That's why the whole culture of Kurayan Village kind of revolves around its women. Well, that's understandable, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but because of that, there tends to be a lot of unsuccessful marriages. Oh? Well, men start to feel left out after a while, and then they just start leaving. Especially if the man has a daughter. Are you saying that Pearl's father is gone? He left the village when she was very young. Boy, it's tough. And she grew up seeing nothing but unhappy marriages all around her. That's why she's so sensitive to things like that. Pearl seems to love you a lot. Well, it's because I'm her only cousin and, well, because of the murder case last year. Pearlie's mother is... Oh yeah. I remember now. Pearl's mother, Morgan Fay. She is serving a prison term in isolation right now. So you see, I'm the only family Pearly has right now. But it's the same for me too. Maya. My mother's gone too. So your mother is still missing? Yeah, no one has any idea where she is. Maya's mother, Misty Fay, the current master of the Kurain channeling technique. She disappeared 17 years ago after getting involved in a certain police case. But you're sure she's still alive, right? Yeah, I know she is. It's sort of a spirit medium thing. And if your mother doesn't come back, then, then what? Then according to the laws of the village, I'll become the next master. Mystic Maya, the master of the Kurain technique. Sounds like a heavy responsibility. Yeah, but there is no one else with the blood of the f f main family who is the spirit medium. My entire face is just itching. Well, Nick, why don't we go out and start investigating? We're not going to learn anything just sitting around the office. 
Yeah, I know. But first I want to talk to Pearls. Um, Mr. Nick? Yeah? I, I acted like a baby. Pearls. I doubted you, even though Mystic Maya trusted you completely. I guess I still have a lot of training to do. Mr. Nick? Y yes? I, from the bottom of my heart, I apologize for what I said. Oh, it's okay. I, I'm the one that should be apologizing. Well, I'm going out now for a little bit. Huh? Where are you going? I may be small, but I still have a lot of spirit channeling power. So I'm going to show you I can be useful too, by finding some evidence. Hey, wait a... Uh, she sure runs fast. Nick, let's back off and give her some room, okay? Yeah. I was looking at this the entire time. Hey, Nick! Look on top of the chair! It looks like an envelope and a letter. Well, don't just stand there. Come on, let's read it. Maya, you know we shouldn't do that. What are you talking about? That letter could be an important clue. No way, you can't just go reading a private letter because you feel like it. Huh. It's not just because I feel like it. It really could be important. If I was sure it was a clue, I guess I wouldn't mind. I know he doesn't look it, but he can really get things done when he puts his mind to it. Really? So when exactly does he put his mind to it? Well, not very often, I admit. What exactly does Miss Delight see in her husband anyway? Um... I just realized something. This is the same thing that Old Bag wore in in the, the end at the end of the last game. That's amazing. Wow, you must really you must have really seen Skyrockets when you first met to love him so much. Skyrockets? I didn't know people still use that word. Hmm, this thing looks vaguely familiar. Oh, I know, it's a fishbowl. Well, an upside down one anyway. I think it's a helmet. An alien helmet. That looks like a tape recorder or something next to it. I think it's a transceiver. An alien transceiver. Nick, do you think maybe you could act like a grown up for a little bit? Getting lectured by Maya to be more of an adult. That's a new low. Back to Apmi. Apmi not home. Maya! Home is Andrews. I'm so sorry, it's my fault. Your precious urn. Your precious urn! Please, calm down. What's wrong? It never ends. Everything I touch ends in failure. Maya, I'm so sorry. I don't do anything to make it up to you. No, it's okay. I don't... Look, I I don't look it, but I'm good with my hands. I'll make you another urn. Hold on, just wait, okay? Oh, breathe, calm down, and talk to us. Forgive me, forgive me. Um, so when did you get the calling card from Mask the Mask? Let's see, exactly ten days ago. I was going to show it to the police, but the detective stopped me. Um, so you asked Detective Atme to help with security. Yes, and in fact, it was about 20 days ago that I hired him. He seemed to know much more about Mask and Mask than the police. So you hired him for security even before the calling card arrived? Well, yes, I had a premonition that something bad might happen. I've learned to trust my hunches. So that's why there are security cameras, even in the basement warehouse. Yes, Lord Lee Taylor is very serious about their security measures. It was their way of saying, bring it on, to any potential thieves. Well, he sure brought it last night, and even left with a nice souvenir. Um, can you tell us a bit more 
bit about the security for the treasure exhibit. It was all my fault. I never should have called this pol this poultry little collection a treasure exhibit anyway. Why do you say that? The yarn that was stolen is a pretty important object. Maybe, but its actual value after appraisal was, well, practically zero. Zero? I polished it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. But that urn contains the soul of Mystic Ami. Anyway, I left all the security arrangements to Detective Ashley. But five days ago, I began receiving all sorts of other exhibit items from Kurain. Lots of people started going in and out of the warehouse down there. So maybe one of them was actually a Master Mosque in disguise. No, I personally checked out everyone that came up, came through here, so that's not possible. Knowing Adrian, she probably even checked out what they ate for breakfast that morning. Nothing. Doesn't want to talk about Mr. Kami. Doesn't want to talk about that either. She doesn't want to talk about anything. her with Miss Andrews last night. The statue wasn't where it is now. And it was right next to the door, wasn't it? Well, if someone moved it, it was probably the criminal. Maybe he didn't like being watched by Mystic Omni while he stole the urn. Hey, cut it out! You're giving me the creeps with that kind of talk. It looks to me like it's been dry for several days. There's something suspicious about this pink mark. The bottom left part of it is shaped oddly and it's shocking pink. I don't see how the color of the paint is in any way important. According to the computer data, someone did in fact go through those big doors last night, right? Yeah, I guess so. The shutter did go up once, you know. A pathetic looking wooden box. Aha! Uh -huh. It's the box that had, that had the sacred urn in it. Don't touch it. I worked so hard to make that box. A precious urn was right there on the other side of these doors. Yeah, and according to the security camera data, someone was in there last night. <sighs> what I'd like to do to him. to see you again, my dear. Welcome to my abode. Relax and soak up the atmosphere. Um, uh, we're actually kind of... Shh! Silence! Precisely as I expected. What is? Zvari. The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. A lawyer and a spirit medium. Am I correct? I think we've already been through this. Huh, so my estimation was correct. Zvari, how truly elegant. Now then, what can I do for you? You mentioned before that you were on guard duty all alone last night. Precisely, this is my fifth encounter with my arch enemy. I refuse to allow anyone to interfere with the rightful pursuit of my prey. I heard you've been after Master Musk since his very first theft. Yes, my dear, I see you've done your homework. In his very first heist, 
That vile thief pilfered the famous jewel, the Tear of Emanon. I first encountered him in the museum's sacred hall, the crime scene itself. So that's why you were hired as security for the treasure exhibit. I'm pretty sure he said that Adrian Andrews hired him. Yes, I borrowed some equipment from Lord Lee Taylor and set the perfect trap. You must mean the security camera. But I thought you were watching the area yourself too. So how did Mask the Mosque manage to steal the urn? That's the million dollar question. What is the Mask's modus operandi? Um, Mr. Apney? Did you know about the sacred urn? I'm interested in only one thing, my dear, and that is Mask the Mosque. Sacred urn? Pfft, that has nothing to do with this case. But wasn't that what Mask the Mosque stole this time? I'm a hunter, sir. The urn was nothing more than a lure to catch my prey. Do you yourselves remember the shape of the individual penis you throw to pigeons? I don't think I like this guy's attitude, Nick. Well, anyway, it looks like he doesn't know about the urn. Um, there's something that's kind of bothering me. Please, my dear, ask me anything you like. After all, we are all bit seekers, wandering alone in the dark. Well, I was wondering how Mask the Mask managed to steal the urn. I mean, isn't it strange that you don't seem to know? And now that you mention it, it is strange. After all, you were on the guard... You were on guard that night at the scene of the crime. Unless you were sound asleep, you should have at least seen Mask the Mask. Where's Mask the Mask? I don't know. What the? It's a Psyche Lock! Psyche Lock? Hey Nick, what is this Psyche Lock thing? Well, your Magatama lets me see when people are keeping secrets. By breaking their mental locks, I can find out what those secrets are. What? This Magatama has that kind of power? Maya, you're the one who gave me this Magatama last year. Well, it's true that this Magatama is a prized Faye family heirloom, but probably was the one that actually imbued it with spiritual powers, right? That's why I don't really know much about what it can do. This is the woman that's going to take over the Kurain Channeling School someday. Sorry. This is the woman that's going to take over the Kurain Channeling School someday? So, how do you do it? How do you break the Psyche Lock thing? Well, you present the Magatama to the person with the secret. Cool! I can't wait to see it in action! Come on, try it out! Oh boy. I think the future master still needs to learn how to be patient. These are like, what the fuck are they talking about? Psyche lock? <laughs> Detective Apme, if you were standing guard at the scene of the crime, there's no way you didn't see Mask the Mask commit the crime. Well now, I can hardly see why you're so positive about that. Yes indeed, I was guarding the warehouse, that much is true. But I can tell you for certain that not a single person passed through that door. I'm not sure why, but this Apney guy is lying through his teeth. I know. Show him some proof. Detective Apney, I have here proof that someone went through that door last night. That's the camera data. There was a security camera set up at the scene of the crime. It should have automatically taken a photo of anyone that went through that door. Precisely. I hope you don't mind, but we've already gotten our hands on the camera data. As you can see, the camera went off exactly once last night. But my monocle didn't catch anyone in his flash. It must be some kind of computer malfunction. It must be. Maybe it was your monocle that malfunctioned. What are you saying? What? Are you saying that I didn't do my duty properly? Detective Acme, you must have seen the thief. You must have seen the thief last night. The question is, why are you trying to hide it? If he's hiding it, there must be some reason. Some reason that he desperately wants to keep hidden. And I've got just a piece of evidence that should prove it. Okay, let's suppose you didn't manage to see Mask the Mosque. In that case, the reason you didn't at, a, at that time was because you were... unconscious. I'm afraid that making a guess is not enough. Time to put your money where your mouth is. Show me your evidence! 
Detective Abney, you were knocked unconscious by the thief, weren't you? Surely you must be joking. You think that I, Luke Hatme, could be knocked unconscious so easily? This sword proves it. That that's Before the theft, this sword was in the hand of the statue of Ami Fei. Furthermore, at that time it was not bent. Uh, uh. There is only one explanation. You were struck on the head and knocked unconscious by this sword. Well, detective, how about it? I'm impressed. You truly are an ace attorney. Well, I'm just gonna... Look at a, at a guide and just like see how much I have left because I'm gonna end it after this. Um, there's still quite a bit. I can't deny that there may be a small hint of truth in what you say. So you were knocked out when the thief first clobbered you. Clobber? What an ugly way of saying it, but I suppose you could put it that way. The coward struck at the precise moment that I turned to look at the computer. So you never noticed that the thief had entered the ware warehouse. No, the coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Perhaps the air ducts or the sewer pipes. And then my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. Ouch. Mr. Abney should have his poor head examined. You can say that again. How could he have underestimated the thief that badly? Well, it looks like we got one thing cleared up anyway. Huh? What? That Abney is the greatest ace detective in the world? No, that he never actually saw the thief. Oh, that's right. So, the thief may not even be Masked the Mask. In just one moment, Sir Lawyer, the thief was unquestionably Masked the Mask. But you never actually saw him. Perhaps so, but I installed a security camera for just such... such a contingency. Oh. Last night, the camera went off exactly once. Behold, this is the photo of the dastardly thief, taken by the security camera. That's him! M mask the mask! The thief can be none other, none, other, none other than the arch criminal, Mask the Mask. After all, he has a very good reason for committing such brazen crimes. W what are you talking about? So, what did you mean by he had a very good reason? Exactly that. Mr. Delight had a very good reason to dress up and commit those crimes. There should be a green envelope somewhere in his room. You'll need to go and investigate. But, but how would you know about that? Hm. Have you forgotten? You're speaking to the finest ace detective ever to walk on the face of the earth. The most brilliant mind since, well, ever. Look at me. Uh, well, I guess we better go take a look just in case. Sorry, ma'am. Let me just take a look at this. Hey, Nick! Remember what Detective Apme said? Exactly that. Mr. Delight, we already saw that. Yeah, the green envelope. We get it. A green envelope, huh? It looks like this is it. Okay, let's have a look. If you don't want your true identity revealed to the world, come to KB Security at 1am on October 12th and bring $50,000. 50000 This is... A, a blackmail letter. Sure looks like a major clue, all right. Well, someone's at the door. I'll be right back. Won't take but a second, I promise. Well, thank you for coming. That's so nice of you. I see a damsel in distress. I just, I just can't help myself. Please come on in. I'll make some coffee. Really? Okay, I, I guess I'll make myself at home, pretty lady. Wait a minute, I know that voice. You do because I don't. I mean, I, I do, but I don't know how to make it. Oh, Nikki boy, I'm so sorry, but I've got another guest. Ah! You! You're... Nick, it's you! And Maya, too! What a fluke! Larry! 
Long time no see. What, you know each other? Nikki boy? Nick, do you and this girl have, you know, something going on? Something? If you mean what I think, I underestimated you, Nick. A gorgeous lady like this? And married too? Way to go, dude. I knew it. Just when things can't get any worse, it's time to cue in the butts. Larry Butts, ever since grade school. He's been... Not exactly a close friend, but yeah, we know each other. Okay. Hey man, that wasn't nice. I was your very first client. You've got quite the storied history, he and I. And what we used to say still rings true. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hey, come on now, you're embarrassing me. And in front of this pretty little thing here. So you two are old childhood friends, I see. That's so sweet. You two go ahead and catch up on old times. So I'm going to go check on my bike. Nice girl at this -y. So how you been, Nick? Too busy if you really want to know. So what have you been up to this whole time? It's been two years since I heard from you. What's with those clothes? You look oh, weird. Hey man, that's what I'm called for. This is my uniform from uniform for my part-time job. I can't believe it's been two years. They say time flies when you're having fun. Wait, was he not in the uh, in the second game? Like, at all? I'm trying to remember. I don't think... Huh, interesting. What's wrong? Nick, I gotta tell you. Women, I don't trust them anymore. You got dumped again? Well, you know Benifer? I followed her all the way to Japan two years ago. That's where I met the famous Caddy Tom and my whole life changed. Benifer? Caddy Tom? I never heard of either of them. Anyway, dude. Caddy Tom chose Holy Hollywood over me. Can you believe it? Well, actually... Anyway, sounds like you had quite the adventure. Women, they're so, so, uh. Oh, but you're different, Maya. You're not like the rest. Looks like he's still the same old Larry. So what are you doing here anyway? Huh? What do you mean by that? I'm just a natural born nice guy, that's all. No, don't call yourself a nice guy. Well, actually, I picked this up last night while I was working. A, a bullet? You say you found this last night. Yeah, it had a driver's license in it, so I figured I'd just return it myself. Hang on, let me see that for a minute. I knew it. Does his picture is in here. I guess he really digs his wife, huh? Hey, Nick! It's not what you were thinking at all! No, I'm pretty sure it is. You haven't changed a bit. Oh, no way, man. I mean, she's a married woman. That's just bad news. He really is here just to check out Miss Delight. So you said you found it at your job, right? Yeah, I'm working for a private security company as a guard. Chicks just love a guy in a uniform, you know? A security guard, huh? So that's what that uniform is all about. So what time was it when you found this last night? Huh? Why are you asking that? Trying to see if I got an alibi? Uh, you're not the one on the hook for a crime this time, buddy. I guess it was around 1 in the morning on the first floor of our company building. What was Mr. Delight's wallet doing there? Anyway, there's nothing weird about that. After all, he works there. He works there? You mean Mr. Delight? Sure. Here, take a look at this. It's right here in this wallet. What's this card? It's a key card for the security company. See? It's got a serial number on it right there. And there's no mistake about it. You said you're working part-time at a security company, right? That's right. Why are you making that scary face? Security company, huh? Something's not quite secure about Larry working there. I need to find out as much as I can about this key card. So you're sure about this key card? Yep. That's the key card we use at the building I work in. According to the serial number, this one is for the CEO's office. 
You needed to get into that room, and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. It leaves a record? Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Larry, I need that data. Oh, slow down, man. Sorry, but that data is off limits to outsiders. If I lost this job, I'd never have a chance with Desi. It's times like these when I wish lawyers weren't so powerless. You didn't touch anything in the wallet, did you? Hey, man, be serious! You know what I was interested in. If Mask the Mask doesn't look out, he's gonna be the victim of a robbery himself. Bust. Even you can learn a few tricks for me, Nick. Yeah? Like what? Look at my hair, for example. It points up straight, right? But your hair, on the other hand, points backwards. That's no good at all, man. It's... Defeatist, you gotta aim high for the stars. I, I can't find a counter-argument to that. That Desi is one awesome lady, all right. It's been a long time since I felt this way. I think I'm I'm really in love this time. A long time, huh? Yeah, well, uh, except for what I feel for you, Maya. I don't think even he knows what he's saying anymore. Something. What if it's actually a hot chick out of that costume? Forget about it. It's a guy. Trust me. Man, you're killing my buzz, dude. Boy, well, talk about someone who has a one-track mind. man surrendered to the police, admitting that he was Mask the Musk. Maybe so, but I'm not convinced that he is really behind the thefts. He is. He sounds pretty sure. Just look at his forehead. It's all in the shape of his mouth and eyes. Hi. This is the classic face of a thief. It is unmistakable. Thank you for dropping by, Just Greg76. <laughs> is there anything that isn't unmistakable to you? Charming young lady responsible for security, Miss Adrian Andrews. Huh? You know her? Yes, well I should. She was the person who hired me for this job. A very intelligent woman. After all, she hired Detective Luke at me, did you not? I'm not entirely convinced that was an intelligent move on her part.
Okay, then that's up. getting stuck. It's the worst. Let me see. What about this? What? If you got something to say, then say it already. Huh? A blackmail letter? Do you know anything about this? What? I don't know anything about Alexis, and that's the truth. Huh? What? I can't believe you do this to me. I thought you were my friend. Fifty thousand dollars? I don't have that kind of money. No, no, you don't understand. This blackmail letter was sent to Ronda Light. <sighs> Man, you scared me. I almost had a heart attack, you idiot. Wait, I'm the idiot? I was I was totally confused because it says KB security right on the envelope. Hmm. Yeah. So what? That's where I've got a part-time job at KB security. What? It sounds like I really should find out some more about this KB security company. There we go. KB Security, the company in the blackmail letter. You know about it? That's where I work, yeah. In fact, I'm on the job right now. Huh? So, what are you doing here then? Uh, the boss is away right now, and you know what mice do when the cat's away. Yes, yes. Anyway, how far away is this company? Let me see, about 30 minutes by car, I guess. Well, if you fly down the road anyway. Hmm. Well, this apartment building is pretty close to Lordly Taylor, right? It would take roughly an hour to go from here to KB Security and back. If Ronda Light was at, was at KB Security when the robbery occurred, then... Uh... Oh. Then he couldn't have stolen the sacred urn. Hey, Nick! Your phone! Hello? Is this the right residence? How oh, pearls! Where are you? I thought I'd go to Lordly Taylor's and Taylor and try to find some more clues, but I'm afraid I've gotten lost. What? Give me the phone, Nick. Pearly, where are you right now? Um, I was walking along and I find my found myself in front of that person's office. That person? Who? Um, the person who doesn't act his age and always says slutty when he's excited. Look at me, Ace Detective. Okay, stay right there. We're coming to get you. Oh, that was Phoenix, sorry. Alright, I'm a little scared. Alright, let's go, Maya. Wait a second, Nick. Wh what? A phone call just now. Sounded like a real cutie. Sir, she is nine years old. Another one of your <clears throat> special friends? Say goodbye to Mr. Light for me, would you, Larry? Would you, Larry? Mystic Maya! Pearly! I never thought I'd see the 
two of you again. So, is Mr. Ace Detective out of the office? Yes, when I arrived here, there wasn't a single soul in sight. Say, Nick, doesn't that doesn't that look like something's changed since we were her last? God, Larry, I know, right? Now that you mention it. This bag, I'm sure it wasn't here before. It looks quite full. I wonder what could be in there. Hey, Nick, come on, open it up. Hey, wait a minute. We can't just open his private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy. This is an important investigation. That's true, and truth be told, I have to admit I'm kind of curious. Well, what's in there? Hang on a sec. I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels... Kind of hard. Smooth. Well, hello there. He's here. What are you doing, sir lawyer? I'm shocked to see a servant of the court. Ignoring the law so flagrantly. I'm really sorry. Maya made me do it. Nick, I can't believe you. A gentleman never uses a lady as an excuse for his own poor behavior. The real question is, can you afford to waste time lollygagging about here? What do you mean by that? Perhaps I should make myself more clear. Tomorrow's trial. Zvare. Shall we say the figurative Sir William will be dropping his panties before lunchtime? Oh, well, Nick, sounds like it's gonna be really exciting. Um, what's going to happen at the trial tomorrow that's so dramatic? Do you know what your biggest mistake so far has been, Sir Lawyer? It was becoming a lawyer in the first place. It certainly does sound like a big mistake, Mr. Nick. Tomorrow will be a day to remember. I, look at me, will take the stand. And then, Zvari, my testimony will prove to be the undoing of the lot of you. Yes, all of you, I will unmask you as the thieves' co-conspirators. Conspirators? You're quick on the defensive, I see. However, it is not I that is your greatest enemy. There is a far more dangerous threat that you will face during the trial. What are you talking about? Sir Lawyer, if you truly are who you say, I'm sure you've heard of him. His name is Godot. G Godot? Um, who is this Godot person? It's not surprising that a spirit medium has not heard the name. Godot, the prosecutor who's... The prosecutor whose equal cannot be found in this country, but in heaven. Godot, a legend or myth, and men pin a lifetime of hopes on the chance to simply meet him. Prosecutor Godot? But the best prosecutor in the country isn't Godot, it's Mr. Edgeworth. Isn't that right, Nick? It's no surprise that a spirit medium such as yourself would know nothing of this. But today's prosecutor, Miles Edgeworth, is currently traveling abroad. Huh? In fact, it was Mr. Edgeworth who acknowledged Godot as the best in his country. <laughs> God, he has the fucking best theme. Not gonna lie. No spoilers, though, but like... Hands down. Can you agree with that? Most certainly. In fact, you could call him the look at me of the prosecutor's office. That's good to hear. The prosecution has a fighting chance tomorrow. Mr. Nick, is this Godot really that strong? Hmm, I seem to remember hearing about someone like that. Not surprising. Some people spend their entire lives idly waiting for his appearance. You have taken a step down the path of foolishness. To try to defend a career criminal who deserves nothing less than the death penalty. Hey, last time I checked, no one knows for sure that Mr. Delight really is the mask. My dear lady, times may change, but people sadly do not. Well, you will understand this when you are more mature. It looks like we're done investigating for the day. Sir Lawyer, the stage has been set and all the pieces are finally in place. All that remains now... It's for the dance to begin. A new prosecutor, an ace detective, and a thief. 
This will be one tough trial. One tough trial that I will have to pick up on later because I'm... Not in the best mental state at the moment, so... Uh... I'm gonna save and play more in a few days, I don't know. No, it's not a blind playthrough at all. Um, I've also played like most of the games like twice. Well, I've played the, uh, the trilogy I've played twice, but I'm gonna start the investigations games after this, which I've played once. And then after that, Apollo Justice, which I am currently replaying on, on my own time. Um, and then the 3DS games. So, no, I, I am well aware of the story, but there are still like certain things that surprise me still <laughs> because I just forget like what actually happens, you know, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So, yeah. Sorry, you you, you kind of came at like I guess like kind of bad time because I was just gonna finish up that chapter and then end the stream. Unfortunately. <sighs> and uh, I don't. I'm not really sure when I will be back. It's kind of hard to say at, at this point in time anyways um hopefully tomorrow but also maybe not i don't know yet like i said not in the best mental state but this is like one of my um special interests so it's easier for me to play this than any other game where i just kind of like get like really like I just start dissociating and it's just like it's not it's not it's not fun at all <laughs> anyways that's yeah <laughs> thank you for for being here for a little while though. I, I really appreciate it but uh yeah I uh hope to see you next time I I go live and play more I will I will probably finish this case next time at least i hope i will it depends on how long it takes according to this um spreadsheet i have it should take about 300 minutes which is like Five hours, which is which is fine. I can do that. Not now, but <laughs> I can do that. So I will probably fi finish this off next time. So, yeah. With that, I am just gonna end it, I guess. I, uh... Hope you have a great day or evening or whatever it is, wherever in the world you are. And I hope to see you again next time. <laughs>